it doesn't matter. Again, Mr. Williams, I invite you to conversate with me directly. I don't do all this internet stuff. The problem is, is you're going after my family, you post my children, and then you mention my name. So you and I, we need to have a conversation. And yes, this is a forever problem. It's me, Darius Cooks, also known as your local scammer. You are, you know, you gay, growing up in Chicago, you just end up being with a tribe of people. I don't know, it's really hard to explain. I, it might be different now, but when I was growing up, in a cruise, we had people we hung with, right? Anyway, and I hung with people like, you remember Calvin, LaBelle, you know, those are people that I used to hang with back in the day, and you see what happened now, especially with randomness of veil. We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? Just come to think of it, let me not bring his name up because let me tell you something. He probably, child, he ready to, where's the expose? Where is the expose? So they don't know what's about to go on. You just attacked him. You just attacked him. What did I say? I said, you better do what I said to do. Did they think you're crazy? If they think you're crazy, they'll just walk away slowly like that. Five, six, seven, eight. Why you got to lie so much? You must wake up and just make up stuff. Because I just do not understand why. Every time you talk, you tell a quick lie. You and your lies gotta go. It got so tired of talking to Pinocchio. Yo. Then you had a nerd of little folks in the eyes. Knowing that you telling them lies. You be telling them lies. I asked you about this. Did you lie about it? Yeah. I asked you about that. Did you lie about it? Yeah. Get them lies together. They all over the place. I bet if Jesus came back, you a lie to his face. Yeah. Pinocchio. I guess you wanna see how far your nose can grow. I said, Pinocchio. I guess you wanna see how far your nose can grow. No, Let's go, start telling all them lies, number one, let's go, cause I don't believe that you say at this point, cause all you do is lie, 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 What's up, good Vipo? Let me know that you can hear me in the chat by typing either New York Lies or Darius Legion Cooks, New York Lies or Darius Legion Cooks, in the chat to let me know that you can hear me. We are here for our Friday night show. Um, 
if all goes well, it'll progress very quickly for me. <laughs> we, we can get on out of here. Uh, I actually got uh, sidetracked today uh, as I was going through uh, doing the research. I told you I was planning on doing a hot topic show and this show. And uh, I got so wrapped up and down the rabbit hole with Darius Crooks and stuff I forgot about as I was pulling stuff for this because we're talking about some older stories. Anyway, we got a future with some good content coming uh, as it pertains to uh, Darius Crooks and um, his decades um, long grifting. Ah, these glasses. Um, thank you to everyone who's letting you know that you can hear me, Saint Senna, Madam. Delilah, Jackson, Tabasco, Deborah, uh, Chocolate, Hibs, MJ, uh, Miss AMJ, Nicole, Don, Mocha, Jackie, Sheila, Marianne, Aunt May, Nurse Lady, and uh, every and Alice and everyone else in the chat who is letting me know that you, you can hear me. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, to everyone out there on Facebook and Instagram, as well as YouTube, uh, please, if you haven't already, Hit that like and share button. Uh, thank you to, out of the 84 of you who voted here on the YouTube side, thank you to the 89% of you who have hit that uh, like and share button already to the 11% of you who have not. I'm always confused by that because you took the time to take the poll and didn't take the time to hit the like button. I don't know what's happening here. But if you can do that as soon as possible, be greatly appreciated. It is free to you, but it is priceless to me and the growth of this channel. So greatly appreciate it in advance so the first poll question we're putting out here as we start to move into our content this evening uh do you prefer the longer two to three hour surviving darius crook live streams or the shorter one like yesterday we was on here what an hour and 20 some minutes i loved it <laughs> we're definitely gonna be doing more of those but i'm um, just curious i'm just curious because tonight it's gonna be i think gonna be pretty short as well uh but just curious you know i like to take the post out of people I already know from previous experience, people didn't mind the longer ones. Um, but anyway, uh, but, you know, you get you get two or three people and then you kind of like, I just need to show them that, you, you you know, this is what the masses want. May not work for everybody, but you can't please everybody. It's not about pleasing everybody. But um, anyway, we have now uh, our segment that we start every show with our meltdown and rants uh, segment. And uh, I, I got to do a little bit of editing today. I did get a little bit of that done. So here you go. This, you know what? This is the thing, it don't come up no more. This is far as it come up. I guess I didn't get the one with the extra long handle on this. It's fine. I, this one, I like the spin mark. You ain't got to touch it. I twisted the pole. This is far as it go up. It only go to uh, 48. What's 48? Two, four, six, eight. That's four feet. This four feet tall. This about four feet. This about two feet. This two more feet. This tall as it go to 48. That's it. It's not meant for me. It's meant for Maria. I love this mob. Girl, it don't the fuck go up. Extendable telescope, 22 to 36 inches or 36 to 48. Bitch, you got two choices. 22 to 36 or 36 to 48. That's it. It don't go no fucking higher than that. Okay? Now, do you want the flow clean or not? What the fuck do the size of the mop got to do? Girl, twist. I have twisted. Do you... Girl, down, up. Down, up. Down, up. Oh, wait a minute. What happened to my... Oh, no. My edit didn't work out. What the heck? Hold on, y'all. Give me a second. Let me see if I could... Now I done worked on that thing. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me see. What's it here? No, it's going to be here. Give me a sec. Bear with me. Bear with me. Unless there was an uh, error when I uploaded it, that's gonna be a couple clips. Uh, do, 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 do. Let 
Now I'm rushing, trying to do, do, do. Let's try. Is this it? Maybe it didn't save right. Okay, if not, uh, y'all see it next week. That's, that's, that's crazy. What happened? Let me try one more time. This, you know what? <laughs> no, okay. Here we go. Here we go. This, you know what? This is the thing. Y'all like this one. See, listen to it one more time. Sorry about that. That was my error. I pulled in the wrong thing. This, you know what? This is the thing. It don't come up no more. This is far as it come up. I guess I didn't get the one with the extra long handle on it. It's fine. I, this one, I like the spin mark. You really got to touch it. I twisted the pole. This is far as it go up. It only go to uh, 48. What's 48? Two, four, six, eight. That's four feet. This four feet tall. This about four feet. This about two feet. This two more feet. This tall as it go to 48. That's it. It's not meant for me. It's meant for Maria. I love this mop. Girl, it don't the fuck go up. Extendable telescope, 22 to 36 inches or 36 to 48. Bitch, you got two choices. 22 to 36 or 36 to 48. That's it. It don't go no fucking higher than that. Okay? Now, do you want the flow clean or not? What the fuck do the size of the mop got to do? Girl, twist. I have twisted. Do you... Girl, down, up, down, up, down, up. I'll talk to y'all later. The dog is bark. He barks all day long, y'all. He barks all day. I, I really want to take a gun and shoot the shit out that dog and kill him. That's what I want to do, but... Jesus, the smacking and, sn and snorting. It's gonna get worse, sis. <laughs> One second. It's always something with this man. I'm telling you about Jeremy, but it's always something with me. And go fix your hair, you ugly heifer. Your fucking mama, bitch. All right, sorry, y'all. Forgive me. God is good. Amen. Oh, but Darius, if he's already going through something mental, mental, why keep speaking on him in the way you are? Don't jump on me, but I don't see it being negative, but he may be filled mentally and can possibly push him over the edge. I don't give two fucks about that. D-Hags. Yeah, that's what um, Lavelle call y'all. You keep saying Vail. I don't know Vail. I know Lavelle. I gotta mention y'all. <laughs> that's from today. I gotta mention. <laughs> I felt like one of the flying monkeys like, oh, he said my name. Ah! <laughs> yes yeah, so um actually the correct name that i may i call them way more i call them flying monkeys way more than d hags but i'll take what i can get i prefer that y'all let him know flying monkeys Arr! that that's my favorite word but i'll take it i'll take it they like master he over there calling us d hags they'll say d hags about us <laughs> Just running back, <laughs> y'all taking all the all the dirt from over here, taking it right on back. But another thing that I, I caught: why is it that all week, all week, I, I I have clips. It's just all this editing. It takes a lot, y'all, to pull all this together. But it's coming together, and 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 we'll have it. Why I keep running into moments when he's talking? Darius Crook said, what was that? La well, he said it multiple times. But last week, most recently, I played for y'all where he claimed he doesn't watch my content, can't stand my content, et cetera, et cetera. But he's constantly able to reference what happens over here with firsthand knowledge. How would he know that that's what I call them? Because he supposedly doesn't listen. So how would he know? Because a lot of people call them D-Hags. I didn't come up with D-Hags. I enjoyed it when I heard it and I adapted it, but I didn't come up with D-Hacks. I don't know who came up with D-Hacks. Wasn't me. But he knows I say it, but he don't watch. Hmm. It can make sense. The math ain't math. And like, like the other stuff we're about to get into this evening. Uh, thank you to uh, everyone who took the poll over here on the YouTube. Um, either everyone who voted, 76% of you are saying that, yes, you do prefer Vail B's longer two to three hour surviving Darius Crooks live streams. 24% say no. 
You know the majority rules over here. Uh, thank you, Precious G. Precious G is in the background uh, uh, handling our, uh, our 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 chat. Yes, uh, Delight is saying, Vail, uh, he stalks you. Right. She, I mean, he's a narcissist. He can't help himself. Narcissists, for better or worse, narcissists love to hear about themselves. He can't help it. I've dedicated a whole series and we do it almost, you know, a few times a week. He can't help it. He's like, oh my God, they talking about me. Oh, I got to hear it. <laughs> can't help it. He's a narcissist. Hey, crooks. He watches the replay most times though, because he likes to distract the, the uh, D monkeys, the uh, deplorables, D hags, flying monkeys, whatever y'all want to call it. He, he likes to distract them when we're live. And so hopefully they'll forget about it. Then he watches the replay because a lot of times when we live, he go live too. Uh, moving on to the next poll question. Did you know that I copied this already? I think I did. Did you know that Darius Crooks had a comedy album? Did you know that this clown tried to be a professional comedian? He tried to be a, a, a gesture. Did you know that? Darius Crooks, um, we know the story, y'all know Chicago, he uh, committed all the, you know, the scams, he had the Fresh Go scam, the grocery delivery company where he scammed people out of uh, credit card payments, didn't deliver food, etc. He had the Cupcake Gallery, Cupcake Shop, the um, 60 plus uh, investors uh, that he scammed them out of money. Uh, they are the ones who helped him get the, the seed money to be able to even get the cupcake calorie cupcake gallery going because of the fact why are you putting my name in the in the chat uh delilah <laughs> why veil b is what you need to be referring to me. i want to see that up in here um um but you got um that and you had all of the other scams that he was doing you know that they all came tumbling down on him and then the next thing you know he ran off escaped <laughs> as it was all coming down on him he escaped to new york new york city so when he went to new york he started to try to reinvent himself we talked about this before i've mentioned a couple of the things i've mentioned this before I'm just not sure how many of you have been around oh, geez. <laughs> as i'm looking at the poll <laughs> hell a lot of y'all ain't seen it <laughs> 90% of you, uh, poll questions we close now. Did you know that Darius Crooks had a comedy album? 90% of you, 91 now, did not know that Darius Crooks had a comedy album. Well, here you go. Darius Crooks. Uh, Darius Crooks is a grifter. He's a grifter in the true sense of the word. Now, I know some people say, no, he was an entrepreneur. He just tries a lot of stuff. Yes, I get that. People, I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've had multiple businesses in my life. Um, but, uh, it is not 30 something of, <laughs> he's at 30 something. I think there's like a line. And I think when you get into the, the, the high T, uh, high digits of 30 something businesses, I think it's safe to say that, uh, you're probably a scammer. You're probably a scammer. So, uh, Darius Crooks, one of his grifts, when he moved to New York and he was trying to reinvent himself, one of the grifts was, you know, he was throwing everything at the wall, trying to see what was sick. And so he, people was telling him he was funny on his, um, on his periscopes and stuff. Uh, and he did, um, he did a little skit. He he was calling it the, um, the, a prayer to be skinny. People like, ah, ha, 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 you're so funny. You should be a comedian. No, I'm sorry, flying monkey. Yeah, you should be a comedian, master. They were infants then. They were baby flying monkeys. They weren't as developed as they are now. So they got in his head. Ain't nobody I know ever told Darius Crooks that he was that funny that he needed to be a comedian. Uh, we also know, well, I've been around long enough, that I knew that most of the funny things that Darius Crooks said he got from other places and other people. He, he mirrored what he heard. Same thing with what you're about to hear. So I actually have the, um, the skit uh, that was a part of um, making him think that he could become a whole comedian and have a, a comedy album. And so let's listen to it. And uh, what I can tell you about this is that uh, he copied this. Uh, his friends used to do this. Um, um, Lunch Lady Eric, who I've told y'all about, 
She's the one, and then and, and that crew, they the one. Well, I think she might have been the one that started doing the fat people pray, prayer, and they would do it at when we go out to eat and all that. Um, craziness. I mean, it was it was whatever. It was shenanigans. Darius Crooks then takes it. He's the he's the person that was growing because at this point, this was um, this is earlier on. This is 2012, 20, 2011, 2012 ish. Um, maybe by this time, this is maybe 2012, 2013. Darius Crooks is a budding influencer. He's not established, but he's taking things from real people in his life and putting it out to the masses. And he's getting full credit because nobody know who Lunch Lady Eric is. So uh, here is. Here it is. Make our burden so light that we and this is the voice he did it in as well. You know, he uh, changed the, the audio. Walk down the street and start floating away because we just that skinny. God, they got to hold on to our ankles so we don't float all the way. Dear Lord, we know you can do it. God, you said in Isaiah, I'm getting happy. 41, that you would uphold us with your righteous hand. Dear God, we ask right now that you make us skinny so we don't hurt you while you're trying to hold us up, dear Lord. We know you can do it. The Bible tells us that now faith, not later faith, but now faith, it is the substance of things hoped for, God. And we got to be certain of what we don't see. And I'm certain I don't see myself fat, huh? I'm certain I don't see myself in the big and tall section, huh? I'm certain I don't see me in the airplane seat with the extension, God. We know you can do it. Take this pack of hot dogs under my neck, dear Lord. Take these extra rolls down the side of my body, God, and remove it. Oh, yes, by morning. We know you can do it. You said that we'd, uh, we'd get on wings, God, like eagles, huh? You said we would run and not uh, get weary, God. You said we would walk. Oh, yes. And we wouldn't faint. God, I'm trusting you because that treadmill and that stairmaster almost killed me dead, God. You said the thief comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. Well, God, he can kill. Oh, yes, he can steal. Oh, yes, and he can destroy this fat. Let him do it, God. Why don't you let him take it away, God? Because I don't want it, God. You know we're fat. You told us to come to you. All of us who were weary and heavy burdened, and you would give us rest, God. Don't give me no rest. Give me skinny instead, dear Lord. God, why don't you take the rest of this fat and give me just a little bit, God. We know you can do it. God, these blessings we ask in your son's name, God. Your skinny son's name. These blessings, oh yes, we ask. Amen. So after this, you would think that, okay, so this for him on social media, keep in mind, social media wasn't as developed back then as it is now. This was, again, maybe 2012, 2013-ish. Um, it, it went mini viral. So he got enough clicks and views that some people noticed him from it, you know, social media um, level. And so because of it, he felt like, it was a highlight in his life at that at that time. Again, no one knows that his friend group had been doing that for a decade, and he just copied that and then did it on social media. So, because that moment had gained him a little bit of a mini viral moment, he then years later <clears throat> decided that he wanted to try to make it happen again and capitalize off of it. So this is during the second version is during the time uh, that Greens and Gravy restaurant was open. So uh, here it is. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now, God, realizing that you are a God that sits high and a God that looks low, God, for your word declares that you care for us, God. I come asking right now, God, if you care so much, Get rid of this stomach, God. That's the prayer for today, God. This belly has got to go, God. It's too big. It's in the way, God. Your word declares that we ought to lay aside every weight that so easily besets us, God. And I am beset it with a whole lot with this stomach, God. I come asking that you allow a control, alt, and delete anointing to run through the land right now, God. And get rid of all this fat around. 
around my stomach. God, I'm asking that you treat this stomach just like you uh, treated the Red Sea. God, you allowed Moses to take his staff and raise it, and you parted the Red Sea. God, I come asking and declaring that we'll raise a staff on this stomach, huh? We will separate this stomach from my body uh, just like you allowed the Red Sea to be parted and you allowed the children of Israel to pass on through. God, I know you can't do it, God. We come asking a special anointing on this stomach right now, God, that you that you take it away, God. Anything that's not like you, this stomach has got to go, God. Treat this stomach like the Philistines. I come asking that you smite this stomach like only you can smite, God. God, bring a smite anointing and let the smite anointing run rapid through the city right now, God. God, I come asking a special prayer on this Independence Day. That just like you allowed David to take out Goliath with five smooth stones, God, you allow them same five smooth stones to come and take out this stomach. God, I know you can do it. God, I come praying right now that this stomach gets removed from my body. I'm one person, one skeleton. Walking around with four bodies, God, it's hard to walk. One skeleton in four bodies, God. Come right now, dear God, I know you can do it, God. For your word declares that you're powerful. You yes, said in your word, if we ask, God, you shall give it to us. You said if we seek, God, we shall find. If we knock, if we knock, if we knock, the door shall be open, God. We come ask. Right now, God, that we open the door and take this stomach and throw it out, God. Trash day in Atlanta is tomorrow. God, I believe this stomach will not be on my body, but this stomach will be in a plastic bag in the trash for the Atlanta waste management people to come pick up tomorrow. God, I know you can do it, God. I come trusting in your word, God. Make me more Christ-like. He was skinny, Jesus. Christ didn't have no stomach, God. He didn't have no belly. He had a 32-inch waist, God. I saw the movie. And when I saw the movie, I said, I want to be like Christ. That's called discipleship. God, I know you can do it. I know you're able. If there's anything that's not like you, God, like this stomach casting away, as far as the east is from the west, take this stomach away, God. Please, God, have mercy for your glory, God. Just like you allowed Abraham to sacrifice, almost sacrifice Isaac, God, because he didn't kill him. There was a ram in the bush. I come canceling every ram in the bush on this stomach sacrifice right now, God. We're going to take this stomach up to the top of the mountain. I know you can do it, God. We're going to find an axe. Okay, I'm done torturing y'all. <laughs> it's like, can y'all believe it's like six minutes long? It's like six minutes long. I was trying to let it play because honestly, the show is so short tonight that I was like, well, I'll just let both of these play. But not, I couldn't take it no more. I couldn't take it. <laughs> and I'm noticing from the comments, y'all couldn't either. Sad. Um, Nurse Lady Vlogs is saying, I don't like folks that uh, mock the Lord. I feel the same way. But his friend group does that. They, again, like I, for those of you who've been around a long time and heard about the evolution of when we actually knew each other. And I mentioned that I stopped hanging. I told him at a certain point that I wasn't going to hang out with his friends anymore. Like you can hang out with them. That's fine. And that was when we were still dating. I was like, I'm not saying I'm not a kind of person to be like, I don't like your friends. So, so you can't go out with them. I'm like, no, you go. But when you go, just know I ain't going with you. <laughs> I'm going to be somewhere else. And I meet up with you afterwards because it was, that sort of stuff. And it just grieved my spirit and other like toxic behavior. Darius Crooks at his worst, all that y'all see, that was what was occurring with the friend group group. But because outside of that, that wasn't how he was for the most, like he had his moments, like when we go play, he just behaved way better. Just, uh, I was, it was almost night and day. It was like, he mirrored that. And so I was like, I don't like being around you when you when you're around them because you act different and I don't like the way they act. They're not my kind of people because I don't believe in going to restaurants and having vulgar conversations and playing fake praying and all of those sort of things. Like it's on so many egregious levels. Like I couldn't even tell y'all all the stories 
flirting with the uh I I know I've told the story before. Um went to Jamaica with them. This is by this time we're all just I'm just friends with crooks. Go to Jamaica and they are on the we're on a tour bu bus, but we're on like one of those you hire people once you get off the port uh, and you just find them on the street kind of taxis like a private. It wasn't like one of those uh, excursion things. Those you feel a little more safe. They literally were flirting in Jamaica with the driver. These gay like people, his friends, gay friends hitting on a guy and being disrespectful. And I'm like, this dude going to drive up. Uh, us up in some uh forest somewhere and get all of us um get all of us um our heads chopped off like craziness i was like yeah i'm not doing nothing else with them it was i felt like that was too dangerous unnecessary period like that ain't how i roll but on top of that dangerous uh crooks is addicted to social media absolutely and uh, the fact that he gains money from it it's just like it's really a recipe for the disaster that we see today Straight from the gate is saying they did the same thing to uh, Tommy Sotomayor, um, and he is rich now. Uh, I, I'm getting um, MAGA Trump vibes from uh, straight from the gate, just based on some of the other comments that I saw. Have at it. Uh, there, the Trumpers are still saying that Trump is innocent too, and saying that people just attacking him because they jealous. I, I get how y'all roll. Flying monkey behavior. Keep doing it. The engagement is fine. Yolanda Pettyway is saying, uh, this dude is ridiculous and such a uh, the liar. Keep exposing him, Vail. He, pl he plays way too much. Yeah. That's, that's the reason I do it. I do it because of that. And on top of that, <laughs> y'all want it. <laughs> y'all want it. I'm like, let me quit fighting. I've been fighting for years. Like, I don't want to constantly talk about him, but that's what y'all want. And y'all continue to, to engage and watch. And so I'm just keep giving it to y'all. Uh, Maddie's mama is saying he hasn't changed reuses the same jokes reuses uh chicken on a stick yeah he's not he's not uh, uh, original like he claims to be everything he does is stolen or recycled uh that's the insecurity uh talking i get it right him the the fat skinny uh to pray to be skinny they used to do that all of the time that was the they joked so much about it back in the day that i was like okay well maybe He's okay with his weight, but then I realized that no, it was a way to protect the fact that he was so insecure. And now watching the evolution of it, you know, a, a decade later when he becomes a social media predator and he's trying to fix everything about like he's trying to totally change the way that he looks. BBLs and mommy makeovers and uh, chiclet horse toilet teeth, uh, everything. Probably some Botox. Uh, his is his voice edited or did he post it like this? Uh, it, it, he edited it to make the chipmunk sound. I, I guess I'm answering your question, but I didn't I didn't edit it at all. I just mashed them together and put the watermark on there. Uh, he's going to have to pay for playing with God like that. Yeah, they do it all the time. This is that's that is I mean, I don't find it funny like that, but. That's light compared to some of the other stuff I'll be showing y'all in the future. Oh, my God. It gets worse. On those IG lies. Oh, and they love it. They eat it up. The flying monkeys, the bee hags. Uh, he doesn't have a real personality. It's pieces of people he has studied. Uh, they gave pills and they, <laughs> they gave pills and therapy for that. Yeah, that that's so uh, true. Um, and I talked about that in the, when I first started covering him in the um, a couple years ago with the surviving Darius Crooks, where I was saying it took me a while to notice. But um, when I knew him personally, like over those first few years, but I was like, wow, he's he copies everything like he gets around a person. If they have a certain way of talking or something they do or words they use, he just adapts them. And we all do it to some degree. But it was almost like he studies those pieces and then mimics them. Uh, and I thought it was very odd because I'm like, but I didn't realize it was this bad. I guess I just was overlooking it. Thank you so much, uh, Saint Center friend. Uh, thank you, Vail, for putting up with Darius for us. Yeah, um, and I appreciate you for noticing that. Also, someone, and that'd be too hard for me to pull it up, but somebody hit me up, one of our VPO hit me up in the text community asking is, um, 
it's saying that they learned that uh is it true that youtube takes part of my proceeds from the super stickers and the super chat and if so they know of uh influence uh, other creators who uh really prefer only getting their uh donations if whatever through cash app and zelle because then we get it all it is true youtube takes a part of it it's not something that i concentrate on uh i just appreciate any donation at any level and have it works best for y'all i know it's convenient to just hit the button but if you want me to have the full amount yes uh cash app and zelle and i have venmo as well are the best ways because i'll get the full your full donation otherwise uh youtube gets i think 30 percent, if i'm not mistaken um and then that information is scrolling across the bottom of your screen screen uh if you want to do the zelle or cash app or venmo thank you and thank you again to the person i'm sorry to, again I, I need to be taking notes and put them in my notes but the person who asked me about that earlier i appreciate you even asking um oh we got a couple more and then i'm a we're gonna move on to the next part again i ain't got that much for y'all tonight uh all the flying monkeys went running to massa this morning telling him uh word for word what, <laughs> what was said last night i i caught that so we we got a little bit of that we'll watch um i didn't catch the whole thing um uh that insecure uh that man is still i'm sorry that insecure man is still who he is today just slightly smaller frame yeah he was being himself around them and you didn't know it back then yes uh a lot of you yes absolutely that's exactly what i <laughs> discovered many many years later like oh that was who you actually were and who which is kind of odd though because i spent way more time with him than they did but that was really him that what y'all see now is how he behaved with them and how they behave and i was just like it's too toxic i don't get it i don't find it entertaining to be this uh you know nasty rude and egregious um who is that trade gaming fish that was me who just sent the cash app i hope you received it thank you uh it comes to my other phone which i don't even know it's around here somewhere <laughs> thank you so much i'll check it uh at by the end of the show i appreciate it okay All right, and uh, I'm going to close out this poll question. Do you do you think that Darius Cooks is funny enough to be a stand-up comedian? 96% of you say no. 4% of you are um, the uh, whoever that was, gate fence person, <laughs> and uh, whoever else is in here. Hey, D-Hags. <laughs> hey, y'all are welcome, though. I don't have no problem with y'all like that. I have a problem with y'all capping for somebody who's a straight up proven predator I, but you know i get it y'all lost and we're gonna watch y'all's confusion in a minute y'all uninformed like for the most part and then some of y'all just okay with it because y'all just as toxic as him like y'all like the drama y'all like toxicity so y'all listen to him for that and he make y'all laugh while um you know frying unhealthy uh diabetic inducing foods have at it uh, thank you so much, uh, Sonia Charlie. I appreciate you, friend, for the super sticker. Greatly appreciate it. Um, okay. So, yes. That's Darius Crook's comedy career. <laughs> As you see, it was flat and didn't go nowhere. That was it. Then we have, this came up last night, and it, I just decided to go ahead and uh, make this part of the show. Um, We'll, we'll be talking about Bali next week. I actually was planning to do that today. And then, uh, like I said, I got pulled down a rabbit hole and then ran out of time for the Bali piece. Because I want to do the whole Bali story from beginning to end, the timeline to where we are present day. And it will, because he's about to go there. So I want us to be caught up by the time all the chaos stars or whatever's going to happen there. I want us to be caught up. So y'all, y'all understand what's happening. I don't want a bunch of confusion. Like, what's happening? How, why he in Bali? Did he? Wh wh 
what, he on vacation only? What he what restaurant? He he reviewing a restaurant that no, he, he's doing all that, and he's talking about building one there. Who is Tommy? He say Tommy his brother. Tommy's a a, a a Indonesian guy that he met on one of his trips a couple months ago to Bali and uh, got in a business deal with him during the trip with a with a contract and everything for an illegal setup. <laughs> I'm like, who does a contract? For something that's illegal, <laughs> huh? <laughs> when it goes awry, who the hell you go? You can't take it to the court of law because it's illegal, huh? Duh. We gonna talk about all that. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we'll start that on Monday because he'll actually be in Japan next week. So we do need to get through it so that when he finally arrives in Bali, we could just go ahead and then uh, immediately, you know, get into the real time stuff. So, um. Oh, poll question I just put out. Do you know that Darius Crooks used to claim to be a full-time professional spoken word artist? Did you know that? Now, I know we talked about it last night, but did you know it? Prior to last night, did you know that Darius Crooks, in addition to his comedy career, <laughs> I, don't, I think there was two albums, so I got to double check. It's been so long, y'all. It's been so long. Like, all this, all this information, y'all. It's so many layers to it, but I almost feel like there's another. Uh, like he tried to do a two comedy albums. I have double checked them. Anyway, so Darius Crooks um, became a spoken word artist. So keep in mind, once again, he leaves Chicago after all the scamming. It's all coming down on him. He abandons his cupcake gallery shop. He got the fresh go. Um, Grocery delivery. He got the investors after him, the Cupcake Gallery investors. He got the Fresco customers that have been scammed after him. He got me and his best friend from high school, who were his food truck uh, business partners. We went through that. I showed y'all how he scammed us in in great detail. If you haven't seen it, go back look for the thumb the the videos that talk about the food truck. We got the food truck on the thumbnail. You'll get all the details of what happened with that. Uh, including the, the documents from the attorneys and email exchanges between Darius Crooks, myself, and the uh, his ex-best friend. All of it. So anyway, all of that has happened. So Darius Crooks now has escaped. Remember, he said he went, he was on his way to Philly to get a Philly cheesesteak, although he had packed all his stuff. Still ain't, I ain't understand that piece of the story. But it ain't meant to all add up, though. Well, who told me last night, Bill, why are you trying to make sense of it? I know, I know, friend. So he um, goes to New York and he ends up doing this uh, interview. I'm not sure. I was like, I didn't have time to dig, dig. So this is a, a just a clipping from an article where he's because he, he used to make sure that he got in publications back in the day. Like sometimes it was D haggers who might uh, have a little blog or something. Uh, he actually did legitimately get an uh, Essence magazine. So he did the, you know, he moved in, even in Chicago, like he got the Cupcake Gallery and local um, newspapers and stuff. So he's always worked on that media piece. Uh, so this happened to be one of those articles that he was able to get in. Now, this is after he's, again, scammed everybody in Chicago. Now he's in New York reinventing himself. He got to become a whole new person. So um, he's being interviewed by this person and he's quoted as saying in this article, I used to do spoken word and open mic nights. I was really good. I would be featured. People would fly me out to perform. But I also had this little thing on the back of my neck to cook, says Williams. And the reality was I had never really seen a rich poet. I'd never seen anybody that was doing poetry that I knew was a multimillionaire. See, everything for her goes to money. Not purpose and passion, but money. So I was like, well, the proof is kind of in the pudding. I probably shouldn't go that route. And so in 2012, I literally made the decision to focus on cooking. Then this is talking about, so this is an article you know, uh, talking about his starting of the dining with uh, diarrhea, dining with Darius Crooks. Goes on to say, with the shift from spoken word to cooking. So he's talking about spoken word, being a spoken word poet 
as if this was a real career for him. As if this is, he, he, he had been developing these skills for years and he had become so popular that people were flying him out. I would love to see the flight records for this, for this whole thing. Says with his shift from uh, shift from spoken word to cooking, Williams also traded the brutal winter weather of Chicago for a milder but snow filled winters of New York City. What sense does that make? Who goes from Chicago to New York for better weather? <laughs> for better what? <laughs> Our weather is very similar, very similar. I mean, we got the lakefront, you know, brings in a nice little. The gust of uh, coal, but it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Who says I'm moving to New York for better weather <laughs> when they live in Chicago? When they live in Chicago? <laughs> well, hell, when they live anywhere, who moves to New York for better weather? New York is an extremely popular place. I know that, but who moves there for better weather? <laughs> people in New York move to Florida and buy and and people with wealth who live in New York usually have a home in Miami or something, so they <laughs> go back and forth because the weather's horrible. It was in 2015 that he quit his day job and moved to Atlanta and began focusing on cooking full time. But it was in his New York City apartment that the idea for dining with Darius, a 30-person, seven-course culinary experience that has become William's signature event, was born becoming an instant hit everything from him here describe it as that that's why he has such a problem with the uh, three kings uh tour because again it wasn't an instant hit he ain't got time to cultivate anything same thing with the cupcake gallery it wasn't an instant instant hit it wasn't making him a millionaire instantly so he abandoned his investors um and threw them to the side and then created uptown pies within the same business because he's still trying to make it where it made money. And on top of that, then was working on uh, having the food truck with us. Because again, it was all about the money. So he's creating all this chaos with these multiple businesses because he wants something to hit. He's just throwing everything till he sees what's going to hit. He eventually realizes that scamming the DHAGs through the Dining with Darius Crooks events and also through social media drama is what was hitting and now the cookware, you know, that came along. That was years later. He was quoted as saying, this had never been done before. And I was only going to do it in New York, says Williams. He's an effing liar. He's an effing liar. For one, he is not the first person to ever do dinner parties as, as a cook in a residence. He is not the only person. It was being done in Chicago before he even left. Two girls and a goat who ended up um, having a restaurant. I don't know if it's still open in Chicago. They were the first in Chicago to do it. And I'm sure just they were, they might've got the idea from somebody else somewhere else. So it this had never been done before. And I was uh, only going to do it in New York. There's literally, and oh Lord, I just hope, I hope I run into it. There's podcast audio of Darius Crooks when he had the, a podcast I don't know if it was called Everyday Cooking, but he had a podcast with Zeta Cooks here in Chicago. It was back in the day when we were still friends. And they used to record like on Wednesdays or something. Uh, and I would be over there just hanging out and working on this house for the videos on Sundays and all that painting stuff. Um, and they, during one of those podcasts, uh, Zeta mentions that the two girls and the goat ladies were doing house uh, dinners. Darius Crook said it's the stupidest thing he's ever heard of. Who going to do that? Ain't nobody finna be bothered with that. Blah, 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 this and that. Fast forward, this would have been maybe four years later or something, maybe five. He's now doing it. And then claiming that no one had ever done it before. This is how she rolled. This is how she rolled. Darius Crooks is quoted as saying, I put uh, tickets on sale and tickets sold out in seven minutes. I made two thousand five hundred dollars in seven minutes i said okay this is something so again that's from a 2020 2021 uh interview again she read you know she just creates her narrative as she goes she just throws uh 
throws everything at the wall, see what sticks. Poll question we're closing out is, Do did you know that Darius Crooks uh, used to claim to be a full-time uh, professional spoken word artist? 17% of you actually had heard of this before. 83% of you had not heard of this particular grift. I wonder who he scammed with that. He probably did have somebody trying to pay him and he's supposed to show up. He ain't show up. You know how she be on some stuff. So anyway, are you curious? Do you want to hear some of Darius Crook's spoken word? I won't torture y'all with all of it, but I do want y'all to get a sampling. Do you want to hear Darius Crook's? I'm going to do it. Every time I decide I'm not going to do a poll, uh, I regret it. <laughs> uh, do you want to hear a sample of Crook's poetry? Do you want to hear a sampling of Darius Crook's spoken word poetry? It don't matter if y'all do or not, because, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 I got to play this first, though. Um, so, OK, he's talking about this spoken word piece. And I forgot about this. He's talking about this spoken word piece uh, like he this was a part of his career. But then it's not quite making as much sense because. In this, he he doesn't mention um, he's talking about people flying him out and all of these other things. But then you get he never mentions this part of the story that we've uh, listened to before. Uh, Chicago, 29 years. So I grew up in Chicago, grew up on the West Side, born and raised. Um, I love Chicago. Um, people who follow me know that. I say it as much as I possibly can. I even wear t-shirts in my videos that say four wings fried hard with salt, pepper, and mild sauce. Okay, so I rep Chicago hard. Um, I was here in Chicago 29 years, um, and then I was actually going to, so I've gone through a rough patch in life, and you know, people who go through rough patches can go to, I don't know, Remember, this rough patch in life is when he scammed a bunch of people in Chicago and ran off to New York. That's the rough patch. I don't know, Israel or something, or go to Africa and find themselves. I was broke, so I couldn't really go find myself. <laughs> couldn't go that far, okay? So what I did was um, I got on the road to go to Philadelphia to get cheesesteaks, okay? Always been fat, so I said, I'm gonna go. <laughs> And I, um, we didn't have Google Maps back then. It was like MapQuest or something, right? So I missed the exit to go to uh, Philly, and I ended up on the turnpike in New Jersey. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go to New York. Why not? So I'm in New York for a while. Uh, it felt like home at the moment, so I ended up staying in New York. I don't advise anyone ever do this, but I stayed in New York. Um, I found a job in like four days. It's that West Side mentality. <laughs> hustle. You got to hustle. So uh, I, was in, I was in New York, uh, still working on food stuff, and I'm sure we'll get to it in some of the questions. And then what happened was um, I was able to quit my full-time job that I had to pursue my passion because uh, it just had got to a really good space financially. And I was like, I, it was the Nor'easters were. Where's the spoken word poet um, being flown out, traveling? Uh, I was doing so great at that. But then I realized it wasn't as much money in there. I never saw any multimillionaires. And so I then went to um, cooking. Where's that part of the story? Why are you chopping your story? Your life story changes on depending on who you're talking to. What is that? Poll question, we're closing out. Do you want to hear a sample of Darius Crook's poetry? 65% of you say yes. 35% of you say no, please, Bill, don't torture us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Take, go, uh, go grab a snack, refresh yourself or something, um, but we got to do it. I had to torture myself to pull this stuff together. Y'all have to listen to this. So the first piece, put your finger. I can't snap both my fingers. I know y'all like, well, what? <laughs> yeah. Snap your fingers. The first piece that we're going to hear from Darius Crooks is it never, it's never her fault. This was done at the Legacy uh, Cafe in St. Louis. This was in April of 2011. And keep in mind, remember, he said that um, he used to go to St. Louis a lot, et cetera, et cetera. I told y'all that part was true. I didn't know that. Um, and uh, what I didn't know is he was torturing y'all with uh, the spoken word. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> you know, 
Okay, that's enough of that. And it sounds all muffled. I'm sure it sounds horrible. Uh, snap your fingers. <laughs> Is that a snap? <laughs> and why is he always using this voice? I don't know. So this is his spoken word voice. <laughs> ah. <laughs> then we move on to uh, the next set. Uh, this is uh, titled, You Should Let Me Love You. And uh, this was done at Poor Souls Speak Poetry um, in, again, St. Louis. This was in November of 2011. Fast forwarding for y'all. Trying to fast forward for y'all. I know it ain't that long, is it? Oh, here we go. It froze on me. Oh, Lord, it's sticking on me. Okay, let me see. Come on now. Come on now. I want to start at the beginning. There we go. That God had to stop what he was doing and do a double take because the very moment I was before, the exact same prayers I prayed for all the time. See, all I'm saying is you should let me love you. And don't get me wrong, it's not that you're not with a good man because you probably are. I'm just a better man for you. <laughs> You should let me love you. <laughs> and then a uh, snap. Is that a snap, y'all? You snapping? No, <laughs> I ain't saying no snapping. <laughs> then lastly, we have um, again a repeat of. Wait, is that right? Wait, where am I? Where am I? Wait, is there another one here? Hold on, let me see. This one is. The more things change, is that this one? Hold on, hold on. I had these uh, set in here <laughs> before I knew I wasn't going to torture y'all with them. I was going to just let them play at first, but that doesn't be too much torture. Um, this one is titled, The More Things Change, perform at the Urban Juke Joint, New York City, August 31st, 2012. That's in Darius Crooks, uh, Darius Crooks' young voice. <laughs> young Crooks. So I stand, rehearsing my lines over and over again. That perfect moment when I gaze into your eyes and grab your hand. And I, I pause. Just like the little engine that could, I gotta tell myself, I think I can. See, I can love you in ways nobody else could. And I can love you in ways nobody else can. On a side note, for those who always question, like, Vail, like what he looked like when you knew him, blah blah blah. He looked. This is pretty much exactly how he looked. Well, his beard is actually still longer though. I think it's the next one if I got it in here. But this is more similar to how he looked when I knew him. Not the chiclet teeth. Uh, he still had hair back then. God hadn't removed it and <laughs> sift his hair as wheat. <laughs> uh, but that's how he looked. Uh -oh, I shouldn't have stopped now. See, I can love you in ways where there's no beginning, and I can love you in ways where there is no end. My love is so dope. I can love you from France to Greece, all the way to Africa. Forget Swahili, because love is the only language we need to comprehend. See, I can love you slow, so there's no need to rewind. Just call me Donnie Hathaway, because I can love you in places where there's no space, and I can love you in places where there's no time. And, and in my dreams, just the breath you breathe is my perfect fantasy. I want you to stop, exhale every bad thing that's ever happened to you, and then inhale me. Just looking into your eyes, I've dreamed of moments we share. So while I'm here, here's what I'm going to declare. Happy days, happier endings. That's what life seems to bring to the scene. You're the leading role handpicked by God. My okay, that's enough. 
Uh, I think, and then there's another one, but this one, do I have it? In? I don't know what's happening with this thing. I may have changed the order. Oh, maybe I don't have it in here. There was a performance in Chicago. All of these are open mics. He's acting as if uh, people were hiring him out or something. Uh, and these were open mics. There was one in Chicago. I guess I forgot to put it on there. Um, and what was interesting to me about the one in Chicago was that um, the fact that he had a slideshow going in the back. It was April of 2020. I didn't put the data in here. Uh, I think it was April 2011 or 12. I think it was 12. And it was like uh, on the projector screen, there was like different photos of like people he knew, like at different events and stuff. And I'm seeing all these people I'm recognizing. I'm like, wait a minute. And I was like, well, I knew him back then. And I'm looking. And then I realized he did that performance uh, in April. It was right after, like, all the ish had gone down, all the email exchanges and stuff that I was reading. To, well, it was going down. I think it was in the middle of going down. So I was like, okay, this makes sense. So he was erasing us from. Because I was like, we were around. I don't see, I don't see even an event or nothing that I was at. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was Darius Crooks. Um, what I noticed too about that uh, last footage, this one, is that um, at the end of the video, he puts in there that it was recorded by uh, Darren, uh, and Darren was one of his was his uh, was his ex neighbor. Who lived across the street from him when he lived on Warren. And what I re recall about that is they ended up meeting on like a, a dating app. Um, and they, the guy just happened to live right across the street. Darius wasn't feeling the guy, and but they kind of just became friends. And the guy was like really uh uh spiritual, religious, and all of that, and so they connected on that level. Now the guy's a minister. Um, but what was interesting to me is during that time. I remember Darius, like, I thought they were cool and it was whatever. I never had an issue with Darren. And then Darius would be like, oh, my God, he get on my nerves. He's, like, stalking me. He 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 won't leave, like, all this stuff. Like, sometimes I would be over there. He would be over there. And he's like, oh, my God, I'd be glad when he leaves, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, if you don't like the guy, why is he here? But the crazy part was that when Darius and I stopped being friends, because I, I felt like he was going to dump, stop being friends with a guy any day now at that point. They were still friends for, I, I don't know, some at least a year or a couple years after that. Darren ended up making a trip to New York, and this was where Darius Crooks was doing this uh, open mic thing. Darren is holding the camera, and Darian was a, a photographer. Um, so it's like Darius Crooks was using him for that. Actually, I never thought about. Darren probably took this stuff. I never thought about that because this is when Darius Crooks lived in New York. So he probably kept Darren around for that time for, uh, period because he knew he could use him for his promotional material without actually paying him. And then eventually he dumped him. Darren ain't, and, and crooks are not friends. Uh, that I know. He's a user. He's a user. He does that with everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Michelle Philly, for the super sticker. I appreciate you, friend. Anyway, moving on. So bringing us to current day, we did a little, little retrospect, a little uh, back down memory lane. So we're done with that now. We're going to come to present day, back to the future. And um, this occurred today. This was not a part of my original show. This is not a part of my original plan. But as I was putting the show together that I thought we were going to do, all of a sudden I see that Darius Crooks is uh, live on Facebook and... Uh, up to more of his um, toxicity. Uh, Clarissa is saying, thank you, Clarissa, for the super chat. Curious, where is his family? I have never heard him talk about them besides his grandmother, the one he got some alleged recipes from. Clarissa, you... You have missed quite a bit. Uh, we've talked about it over here. I talked about it a couple of days ago. He also went in depth last weekend talking about his situation with his mother, but he's actually done it multiple times, multiple times. And I got a few of them recorded. 
Um, but just the short of it, because I'll have some video on it at some point in the future. I also talk about it in our my first um in the Surviving Darius Crooks series, probably by episode two or three. I think I mentioned maybe even before that, it might be episode one. But uh, long story short, he does not have a relationship with his mother. Um, she was in his life when he was growing up. Um, but he says that she wasn't around. Um, oh my God, it's too complicated. But anyway, his mom <laughs> was raising him, but he claims that uh, she wasn't um, his family. So we have to be careful with this stuff because this is what we're going to get into a video. Um, uh, case management is saying his family disowned him. That's not entirely true. And this is what happens. Like the stuff we're about to watch is the flying monkey D hags talk to Darius Crooks about all of the misinformation that goes out there. That then allows him to be like, what do you mean my family disowned me? My aunts and um, my cousins, we we just uh, did this and that. Y'all was on live with me when I was just talking to my, my auntie Cynthia, da, 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 this and that. Because his entire family has not disowned him. He does not have a relationship with his mother. He does not have a relationship with his siblings, his brother and sister, who are about a decade uh, younger than him. But he does have some relationship with extended family members, cousins, stuff like that. Not everybody, but some of them. And um, he has the women, the older women, motherly figures who went to his church. So uh, Miss Tillery and I'm forgetting the other name is another lady, too. And I knew all of them back back in the day. He has those people in his life. It's just that his he doesn't talk to his mama and uh, his siblings. He claims his mama always chose men over him. Um, he says basically she didn't take the best care of him. But then even last weekend, he was contradicting himself because he was saying she didn't take great care of him. But then he was saying he uh pretty much had everything he wanted um so i don't know <laughs> it's all over the place but yes uh clarissa he has talked about his uh in depth and one day we'll cover what we'll cover it when i can pull all the footage of him actually talking about it because i don't want to just regurgitate stuff and then have piece bits and pieces missing yes uh don smart he bought miss tillery a car uh like all of that's very local to me. I know exactly where Miss Tillery lives. She lives in the neighborhood I grew up in. Uh, I knew her back in the day. Miss Tillery took him in when he was homeless. So his parent, the story he tells is that his stepfather put him out because he was gay. I don't know how true that is. But anyway, he ended up um, being homeless. Miss Tillery, he was at church or something and leaving. Miss Tillery sensed that something was wrong. She ended up telling him, come home with me. And she gave him like a spare bedroom with his own TV, all this stuff. And that's why he, uh, to this day, has an admiration uh, for Miss Tillery, because she took him in when his family wouldn't. His grandmother had passed away by then. I think there's more to the story. I would love to... Uh, get the other side of the story because as I've gotten I know what I heard back in the day but as I've learned more about him and see how he moves and all the stuff I didn't know all the lies and he's never he he is always the victim it, it's making me question some stuff and on top of that it don't all, it don't completely add up with what I did know I did know his mother I've been around his mother conversations with his mother i've been around his siblings well they were kids back then but and it ain't 100 percent adding up because i remember when he was trying to have a relationship with his siblings who were like kids at the time and he was gonna keep them over the weekend or he was trying to do stuff like that here or there and it was something that went down and he was ready to dismiss his adolescent siblings for something like them i can't even remember it was so petty and I was like, you don't dismiss your and my my siblings were the same age. So I was like, you don't even you don't hold adolescents to the same standards as adults or somebody, you know, our age. It was. And so he's ready to cut them off. And he eventually did cut them off. <laughs> so he said he cut his brother off because his brother asked him for one hundred dollars. And this was after Darius Crooks supposedly had money and all that kind of stuff, you know, with the restaurants or whatever he had going on at the time. 
This is when he was Darius Cooks. And his brother asked for $100, and he cut his brother off. That's his word. That's what he said. Darius Crooks. What this poll is. Did you watch Darius? Oh, the poll is, did you watch uh, Darius Crooks' Facebook uh, live this afternoon? 11% of you did. 89% of you uh, did not for various reasons. Some of y'all don't watch it at all unless I play it. <laughs> Majority of y'all. But anyway, we're going to watch that. We're going to do a little bit of reaction. Give you a little heads up of what was actually occurring. Um, Darius Crooks ended up dragging Jeremy again today. Um, and on top of that, the D haggers were, uh, telling on us, <laughs> telling on like the exposed groups and little bits and pieces they didn't heard over here. Uh, they claim that we're, uh, we're just making it all up. Uh, we're crabs in a barrel. We're miserable. Uh, we don't like to see people be successful. And when people are successful, uh, we just create, um, hate campaigns against them. This is what helps them sleep at night. What sense that makes, I don't know. Millions of things that we could be talking about. Why would we choose somebody who's innocent and 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 not a predator, a scammer, hasn't harmed people, and just because they're successful and got a little money, we would, that's who we want him. He's a good guy. He's a Christian. He He's uh good to his followers. He don't curse them out and rant and have meltdowns and call them bitches and hoes. That's who we want. <laughs> We're going to try to destroy him. Whatever helps y'all sleep at night. It's very much so flying monkey behavior. So we're about to watch flying monkey behavior in full force. That's it. I think that's it. D hags. Yeah, that's what um Lavelle call y'all. You keep saying Vale. I don't know Vale. I know Lavelle. Again, how you know that if you're not watching Crooks? Hey, Crooks. Right. Like Jeremy was such a good friend by leaving everyone else hanging and taking money off the table for La Quinta, Corey, and leaving Darren. So this is I jumped I jumped into the live a little bit. I edited and switched around some stuff uh so we can get to the meat of it. So this is um he got on his Facebook live asking them, now what's going on in these in the hate group? What the hate group saying about me now? That was the title of um the video. And so this whole live stream was about them being able to say because he's getting so many messages from the flying monkeys. Massa, look, Massa, look what they saying about you, Massa. Because the stuff is adding up to them. So he can't avoid, he can't completely avoid it. As much as he's acting like, I don't care, I they, I'm moving on, I'm cutting off comments, blah, blah, blah. He can't ignore it because they're getting real information and things are starting to add up for some of them, not all of them. Some of them got good sense. They, they don't have... Um, they don't have common sense. They ain't got critical thinking skills uh, and all of that. So some of them is just still over their head. But others, they like, but he said this and he playing this. You know, that kind of stuff. So he's now choosing to answer their questions. There was a bunch of stuff leading up to that. That part I pushed towards the back. But then they get to telling on Jeremy. So they they just vent him. He's giving them a vent session. But it's in his favor. So he he's his, his uh, behavior is very different than what you're normally used to seeing. Now, you ain't going to hear him calling them bees and holes. He's love bombing them now. So listen to this. This is very, again, it's always like, you know, parasocial relationships, um, watching the psychology of this. It's very interesting. Darius, $35,000 in a hole, but Darius is a bad friend. Come on, Putin. Let me tell you something. Come on, preach this sermon. I'm going to help you preach it. That's right. I am out of about $35,000. They don't, they don't want to tell you that part. What you need to understand is I never once asked Corey or Jeremy for a dime. Never one time. In fact, Corey and I had to fight over the bill. When we would go out to eat or whatever the case may be, both of us would fight over who would pay what because both of us wanted the points on our credit card. Okay? Um, yes, you are absolutely right. Not just LaQuincy, but did you know we also had two other project managers before we had LaQuincy? See, I'll tell you the truth, honey. See, I'll tell you the tea. I'll run, it I'll run you the tea real quick. I'll tell you. Remember in the Q&A, they talked about that, that that, that was their fourth uh, project manager. So what tea are you talking about? We already know this. 
what you need to know. You see what I'm saying? Yes, we had one project manager didn't do well. Then we hired a second project manager who also didn't do well. We realized <laughs> where we were going wrong. We fixed our mistakes and then we hired a third one. But do you know that that first one had to get paid? That was a full-time position. The second one had to get paid. That was a full-time position. And the third one had to get paid. And that was a full-time position. How are these full-time positions when he's admitting that these are contract gig workers? LaQuinty had a contract. And then he's like, oh, but they're full-time work. Like, as if he had to pay health and medical and state and federal taxes and stuff. Dude, you wrote them, uh, and I'm sure when they got dismissed, they got, if they even got, <laughs> if they even got their final payment, they just got a payment. That's it. And he was done with it. But again, he takes a bit of the truth and wraps it in a big old lie and tries to make it more than what it is. Who do you think paid them? And if you look and say Corey or you look and say Jeremy, I'm going to block you. They don't tell you about that, do they? Huh? Oh, but he's broke. But he's paying salaries, full-time salaries, as an investment, as a capital into the whole thing. Now he didn't went from a foot. It was one person. Remember, he didn't hire all the uh, three or four of those project managers at the same time. He swapped them out. But now he salaries. I'm paying salaries, girl. I've also had an edible or two. So forgive me if my uh, intonation and my speech is that of blunt, direct, curt, and terse. All right. I'm under the influence. Um, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. I paid. I paid them. I did. I never asked them for any money. Um, all the, when we finally got the, the um, when we finally got the um, the place, now let me sit down and talk to y'all. Hold on, so I can really tell you what I came to this service for. Cause don't now remember a couple of weeks ago he was saying, you know, it was only thirty five thousand dollars. It's the cost of doing business. You know, it wasn't no big deal. Blah blah blah. He also stated it was his brainchild. He pulled them in and he insisted that he take care of everything. Now. It's uh, they took advantage of poor me. Did they, 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 they? I did all this. This is on me. I'm out of thirty five thousand dollars. But I thought it was just it's just the cost of doing business. Ain't no big deal. I'm big daddy. I can handle this all. Don't lie on me. When we um finally got the place, we had to put a deposit down on the place. Who paid the deposit? That planning session, remember that planning session we was in Puerto Rico? You remember the planning session? It's the one where we did the menu live in the planning session. And then you said the menu sound great because we was on my live stream, Corey live stream, and Jeremy live stream. And, and y'all all said, oh, that menu sounds amazing. Until we released the menu, the same one that we planned in the exact same way. And then you said you didn't like the menu. You see how he gaslights them? Let me move this out of my face. Y'all see how he gaslights them by saying when he had, when they were in Puerto Rico for the uh, meeting that they had to plan the menu, he's saying that everybody, all of the flying monkeys, all the D-hags, all of them said the menu was exceptional. It was amazing. It was great. They loved everything that they came up with. But then when the menu actually came out, they hated it. What for one, what sense do that make? For two, he's gaslighting them because people who were in the live said that they were saying that they didn't like the food. People were not. Well, for one, he didn't take a poll. He didn't do a survey. He's doing that based on a comment here or there. And again, we see how he does. He only picks out things that go with his narrative. He's only going to read the comments that go with his narrative. And if he accidentally runs into a comment that does not go with his narrative, he curses them out, calls them a name, and blocks them. And they sit there and let him gaslight them, knowing good and well that all of them did not agree to that menu prior to it going out. Which is why they wouldn't, um, they didn't like it. And they wouldn't buy them damn tickets. But now it's their fault. He won't even take accountability for the menu anymore. 
The event was not a great idea. It wasn't executed properly. I'll say that. The menu was the worst part of it all. And now he and he was the creator of the entrees, the, part, the primary part of the menu that everybody had a problem with. And now he has absolved himself of that responsibility for that ish show of a menu. Now it's their fault. It's the D hag's fault that the menu was garbage and amateurish and had chicken on a stick on it that he'd been making for 20 years. It's their fault. Y'all see how, and, and they just, yeah, it's the ones who just didn't have no good palate. It's crazy. It's a cult. That planning session, right. So that planning session. He has absolved himself of, as, uh, as, as being the problem or the issue. But remember, we watched the video over here. When it all first went down, he comes on there that Saturday and he's, oh, so what's the problem? Oh, y'all don't like the menu. Oh, oh, it's the distance. Oh, oh, it's too much Hennessy. Oh, that's a good point. Well, yeah, I'm here. I'm just trying to listen to y'all. You should have been doing that in the beginning. But now he's gone from that. Well, it looks like y'all didn't want it. Looks like I missed the mark on this. Yeah. Now he ain't missed the mark. It's them. They lied to him, said they liked something that they didn't like. And then when he put it out, they didn't support it. <laughs> She's a sociopath. Was in Puerto Rico. Um, who you think paid for the hotels? Who you think paid for the flight? Ain't nothing worse than a person who invites you to something, says they're going to treat you, and then throw not only throws it in your face, but basically tells everybody else that they did it like they want a pat on the back to make it look like they did something for you that you couldn't do for yourself oh i just can't take it that's why i don't let people do stuff for me <laughs> it's true because this gets under my skin when somebody does something for somebody and then they run to go tell people what they did for them when they volunteered it's, uh reimbursed Jeremy for the flights, for him and LaQuincy. I didn't pay for Corey's flight. Corey paid for his own flight. Um, the That beautiful conference room that we sat in at the uh, Condado Vanderbilt on Ashford. Yeah, who do you think paid for that? Those meals. We went out to eat. We had dinner and the, the chuletas con con at Raices and the Bebos. And um, I think... No, I think I paid for the food at Robot Vieja, too. I can't remember. I think I did. Who do you think paid for that? Yeah. I think I did. So who paid for that? You think you did or you did? So what are you saying? Who paid for that when you're saying you're not even sure 100% that you did, in fact, pay for it? Right. So all in all, um, it adds up to be about 35. You know, all of the the, the videographer... You know, Corey did a video. I had to reimburse Corey. Dez, Desra had to had to not reimburse. Had to pay Dez. Had to pay um Corey. Had to pay those invoices. Um, the photographer. Again, invoices. That means they're not employees. They're contractors, independent contractors. But all of a sudden, I got full time salaries. I had to pay. Girl, the exaggeration. It's the exaggeration for me. Had to pay for that. Um, Ashley flew out when we did the. Um, and Jeremy is still over there being mean, but claiming him getting bullied is where he draws the line. Well, you know, I blocked him. Yeah, I blocked him. Um, and I'll tell you why I blocked Jeremy. Um, it, it was the, the, I talk about this on Instagram all the time. So again, if you don't follow on Instagram, you should, because we have a, a great time and we have a really great conversation. So the reason I blocked him was, um, last the, like one of the things I seen that came across my timeline from him was um, I don't know it was something and you know how you scroll and and I had you know I was fine until I saw what came across and at first I was very much um, like care love concern so she again got in her feelings about what she caused to someone else and I guarantee you but she you see this is where he he creates the narrative because he ain't telling the people what the post was. He's supposed to be the, the king of receipts, queen of receipts. Why not show what it was 
that Jeremy posted that got you so in your feelings? What was so offensive that he posted? It had to be something like Jeremy, because I ain't seen nothing Jeremy posted that was egregious towards Darius Crooks. I've seen him be too kind, to be honest, but just be uh, straightforward and honest about how toxic the situation was and what his guts told him not to do. That might have offended her. That's probably what Crooks was offended by. But again, she's now made it about her. Got to she got to become the victim in this. Now's the D hacks fault that the menu uh, was garbage. Now and, and the event being canceled. Well, he canceled the event, but the, the event being canceled or not going through. Now it's Jeremy's fault. Crooks ain't the problem. It goes on. It's more. That's where my heart was, right? And then, child, you know, after you realize he all right and everything is good, that something switched. You know, my whole my whole energy switched and I started feeling, you know, like anger and rage inside because then the gravity of what had happened had started to sit in. So I said, you know what? It's probably best I unfollow because I don't need no malice in my heart. I'm trying to go to heaven. You see what I'm saying? So it's probably best that I unfollow. So I unfollow and I block because I don't want to see any more of his stuff come across my timeline. I didn't block him out of my phone. I just blocked from seeing his social media. Um, and so people kept saying, you know, well, what about the friendship, the friendship? And, you know, while I, the way I just the way I explained it, you know, I keeps it real. I ain't got time to sit around here. A lot of y'all listen. She does that all the time. That's part of her programming. You know, I'm transparent. Y'all know how I am. I'm always transparent. I tell the truth. I ain't got a lot of y'all. Y'all know I don't never lie to y'all. When she lied, <laughs> for one, she's telling a lie now. She's leading right into it. You know, it's levels to friendship. Do not act like this don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. Everybody ain't a level one, right? Some people are level two, level three, level four, level five. Level fives can't come in your house, come in your house unannounced, walk in your, in your house, take their shoes off, go in your refrigerator. That's number one and maybe number two. You see what I'm saying? Me and Jamie wasn't a one or a two, bro. If I could be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Um, for those of you who follow me from a personal perspective, not just, you know, business and cooking, but from a personal perspective, when is the last time you saw Jeremy and I together prior to th the Three Kings, right? You have Now, remember, y'all, because we, we've been on this journey together. Like, we've been on this entire, this this three queen, uh, two queens and a king. No, I'm sorry, two kings and a queen tour. We've been on this since the, since the Q&A. We saw them proclaim how strong of a friendship they had, how they had been friends for so many years that could that their bond was unbreakable. Now Darius Crooks is basically saying she was an associate. Y'all ain't never even heard me talk about her until this. <laughs> so you was lying then, right? You was lying. Y'all not y'all weren't ever close. You haven't seen you haven't seen us shooting marbles together you haven't seen us at the, the you know down to the house or whatever you know what i'm saying so you know when you talk about friendship i mean you know i don't want to lose none but you know the ones that's worth saving are the ones that's worth saving and if you know what i mean and i think you do okay um paying that 35k will come back tenfold i ain't even worried about it bro god is good to me he ain't worried about it but he literally just listed everything he Play, paid for that came to his mind man, yeah, man. folks that don't have anything going on keep up so much drama they need to focus on improving their own life and household sure oh lord Jesus. You i'm not saying how much the music was playing or how loud it got most under the guise of protecting his peace he lacks accountability true we gotta let this part play now. Remind, mind you, their own life and house. Mind you, this is the D Hags doing the flying monkey behavior, commenting to Darius Crooks, and he's reading all of the comments that's agreeing with him. And they just as gaslit as ever. They didn't bought into the narrative that he created. A lot of them don't watch consistently either, is what I've gathered over time. So they they only catch bits and pieces. So some of them didn't watch it for themselves and see this all go go down day by day. So now they're just buying into his negative that Jeremy is the reason it got canceled. Some of them people don't know that Darius Crooks had went live all day on Saturday multiple times 
talking about he was contemplating canceling it. He was going to cancel it had uh, even had uh, had Jeremy waited. The tour was getting canceled. Jeremy just got on there and said what he said first. But that tour was getting canceled by Darius Crooks. He was saying he was going to cancel it. He just hadn't made it official. He was the only person that had an issue with the lack of ticket sales or the low ticket sales. Corey and Jeremy were okay with the ticket sales. Jeremy said it in the live. I was okay with that. I didn't agree with him going. Jeremy was saying he didn't agree with Darius Crooks going live all day on Saturday about it because he didn't feel like it was a big enough issue. They wanted to continue as it was. And they were confident that they would still get enough seats sold to make it worthwhile. Darius Crooks was the one who had an issue with it. And when Jeremy got overwhelmed and ended up going live first, Darius Crooks used that as his opportunity to say, ah, you the reason it's not going to happen now. And the deep flying monkeys turned from looking at Darius Crooks like, ah, it's you, Jeremy. At first, they was waiting with bated breath to see what they massa was going to say on whether or not it was going to be canceled. Now it's Jeremy's fault. The whole fiasco is Jeremy's fault. I'm sorry. Everything is Jeremy's fault except for the menus because the menu is the DHAG's fault. <laughs> okay. So, sure. Oh, that's easy. You learn me, yes, you do. You know that I need. He's doing the most under the guise of protecting his peace. He lacks accountability. True. That comment applies to Darius crooks but they're talking about jeremy jeremy is doing the most and lacks accountability y'all see how they they are delusional jeremy literally left everyone hanging and LaQuincy was supposed to be his bestie i don't follow him i can't deal with his constant complaining yeah that was the hard part is like it's so peaceful for uh being a part of the d-hag like Darius Crooks ain't cursing him out every day and uh, having attitudes, and they don't notice the lying part. Being sassy. That ain't a problem. Because he brought LaQuinty on, and then that broke up their situation. They She went to the house to check on him. He told her to go. He put out the house. A whole, it was a whole lot of shit going on with that. And that's, you know, you know, shaky. I saw they were calling the ASPCA because you were talking about harming the dog. Oh, they'd be all right. They literally running down everything they're seeing in the exposed groups and the stuff we talk about over here. They are running it all down in those comment sections. They be over here in the bushes, y'all. Hey, flying monkeys. Hey, D hacks. Hope y'all listening to and learning something. Corey definitely says you pay for everything. Yeah, because I did. It's the truth. Let me hold you tight. Only for one. Nah, the Three Kings is off, baby. Chuletas también. Claro que sí. Chuletas fritas. Chuletas can can. Con salsa picante. Son con salsa verde. Con arroz con gandules. Con toro. Comida típica de la isla de Puerto Rico. I always come with receipts. I try. They jealous. It's a shame you have to explain yourself constantly. They can't be happy for someone who is successful. They have a crab mentality. God don't make mistakes. Oh, I'm not even. You know what's so funny? I don't even got to explain myself. I just don't mind telling y'all because the people think I be lying. Thank you for that reminder. I see. I, I appreciate all my mods uh, reminding y'all about this. The like button that exists over here on the YouTube side. Um, we got 243 likes and 365 viewers. Uh, let's get the likes up. Uh, it needs to be in the 300s at least. I know it's we, it's hard to get 100% because some of y'all hands are busy and stuff, or some of y'all don't know how, and some of y'all aren't lag logged into your account, so you can't hit the like button. But the rest of y'all, please hit the like button. Um, I'm not going to delay the show because I want to get this over, but <laughs> 
this was another kind of show i'd be like i'm not doing nothing else till y'all get these likes up but let's get the likes up to at least we should be at about 300 at least at least thank you in advance again it's free to you but it is invaluable to me and the growth of this channel thank you in advance name lopez yeah christy yeah she makes vanilla don't worry rocky mountain vanilla we're gonna put her on when she's ready that's what white people do they make vanilla and you see i use it okay if a white person makes homemade vanilla or a casserole it's legit go for it um you see everything it's it's very we're gonna study this more right precious he's so racist uh, we're going to study this more, though. I, I, I can't say that I noticed this until uh, probably once I this whole exposing him stuff started happening in 2021. But I never really noticed how much he holds white people in high esteem as if they are better. And whatever white people do is better because they're white. You pay pay attention. Pay attention. Uh, but she and I are going to go paint the, the town of Tokyo pink together real fast. I'm super excited. Um, Eugene is going with me. If you don't know who Eugene is, he's my videographer. Um, I've always maintained two videographers. I don't talk a lot over here about personal stuff, so you guys may not know. But you can also join us on Instagram. I go in live on Instagram several times a day, and we have a beautiful, lovely community on Instagram, and we talk about all types of shit over there. But Eugene is my uh, studio, he's my studio um, videographer. He's been with me for, I think it's his fourth year with me at this point. Um, and- uh, So notice he's talking about how he goes live incessantly over on Instagram and he's telling them, this, this is only on Facebook that he's doing this, uh, this particular live. And he's letting the people to know you, if you come on over to the uh, Instagram side, you're going to see a lot more about my personal life. And I go live multiple times a day. Incessantly is what I like to say, because it's, again, three to seven times a day. It's ridiculous. It really shows he doesn't have a life. Well, and also that he does everything for clicks and views. Since I lost Corey, I know you're going to say, what happened to Corey? It's a video over here. You can go watch the video. Uh, but basically, you know, he got in trouble one too many times and one too many infractions. And, you know, we've had to separate and go our way. So uh, we wish him well. No slander. But Eugene is coming. Um, now. The Greens, yes. That piece is at the studio in Atlanta, in that kitchen. Uh, I'm in Houston, at my house in Houston. Um, so Eugene is going to be with me next week. And he's going to be shooting... I'm going to be on editing, but whatever. Uh, I seem to be, you know, I seem to be all right on the edits. Um, and so next week, you're going to see a lot of that interaction and footage. As a matter of fact, I lead tomorrow night, or really Sunday, first thing Sunday, like 12 o'clock Sunday morning, but whatever. Um, I'm hosting a fish fry tomorrow. I'm going to do a fish fry, y'all. I'm gonna do a fish fry. Girl, I don't got no more space for no more artwork. Um, I got a couple friends coming over tomorrow for dinner. And I decided to do a uh a, a fish fry. A bougie fish fry for them. I might put a lasagna in the oven. I haven't made a lasagna in ages. You know what I'm saying? I have not made a la I have not made a lasagna in in ages. So I was thinking, I might. Like, Throw lasagna in the oven. You know? Anyway. What am I doing? Girl, I was cleaning the toilet. I'm sorry. You know how you... Listen, you know how you bitch your house doing stuff? I don't took this edible. Okay? So, you know, you're just spraying wiping. That's it. You know. Everybody house me a little something, child. You know. I ever spraying and wiping, spraying and wiping, spraying and wiping. Anyway, uh... <clears throat> so my hate group hate group hate group hate group let's get back on the subject because so that's part of his programming to call the people who explode expose him the coalition of people who expose him on various platforms again we got the facebook exposing darius crooks you got the uh 
Darius Crook Scam Me group, which uh, is very suspect. I think that was created by uh, a D-Hagger because uh, when you go in there, they be gaslighting like crazy in that one. But no, don't pay no attention to that one. But anyway, uh, but you got Twitter, the hashtag Darius Crooks hashtag. You got Lipstick Alley. There's a few threads that have been going on Lipstick Alley since about 2014, I think, 2013, 2014. So there's groups of people exposing him. He has, like he did with the scammer, when people started calling him a scammer, he uh, took ownership of that. And he started calling, as I have in the intro, uh, during our trailer, the, the intro to the show, where he says, uh, hey, I'm Darius Crooks, your local scammer. He, he took ownership of that word and even had the D-hags where they started um, saying, I just got scammed by Darius Crooks. Oh, I got to find that one. Oh, yeah, that's that got to be a part of our opening. I just got scammed by Darius Crooks. And boy, no, I just I just had dinner with Darius Crooks. And boy, did he scam me good. Like all that. <laughs> so and then they post. Um, They'll tag him and post on their personal pages when they order cookbooks or cookware. And they like, um, thanks. Uh, thanks, Juanito. Uh, for my discount code, Darius, I love the way you scammed me. And then they got a picture of their stuff. It's, 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 it's so anyway, he's done that. It's marketing. It's it's, 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 it's whatever. <laughs> he has his little moments, and then we are relentless. And then he starts crying like he's doing right now, like he's been doing for about the past couple of weeks. Um, but now his thing is to call everybody who's exposing him hate group. Cause that for the D hack flying monkey sound like, Oh my God, why they hating? They, Oh my God. They just some haters. They unhappy. They crabs in a barrel. They crabs in a barrel, master. Why they hating? They some haters. Oh, we all got haters. Like that's what that's supposed to be. That's what that's supposed to be. So he uses the word a lot. That's cause he's programming them and you'll start seeing them in the comments, because they ain't got, you know, two cents. They got bird brains over there. They flying monkeys with bird brains. So they start repeating his narrative. So you'll notice when they trolling in the comments, they using the same words he using. Y'all some haters. <laughs> so hi. The hate group. Now, what happened that y'all got to tell me? Because. I'm not really, I'm not really up a whole lot on everything that's going on, but apparently it seems that I have done, I'm trying to find somewhere to put y'all, I done packed my mounts, my regular mounts, I done packed them up because I'm, they going with me to. I missed it. I, I meant to pay more attention. Now we know he was cleaning the toilet, looked like with his bare hands on top of that, but he was cleaning the toilet. He definitely had no gloves on. Did he wash his hands? Because it don't look like he ever washed his hands. I heard water running, but did he wash? Because he never put the phone down to really wash his hands properly. And you can't wash one of your hands like this. <laughs> That's not how that works. You need both the hands to rub together and some soap. And if you use your bare hands to dig in the toilet and clean it out, you need to wash your hands a few times. Uh, uh, Marley is saying, um, saying, nope, he ain't wash his hands. No chocolate saying, nope, he ain't wash no hands. I ain't think he did, nurse lady, never. <laughs> right, you're right, never. To Asian, nasty, just nasty, and he admitted he was cleaning the toilet. Um. Now, apparently, I have done something this time. I'm not really sure what I've done. So you guys have to keep me. Um. You have to keep me um honest and abreast. What have I done now? What? Who have I scammed? Who have I pissed off? And why have I done that? What have I done? What is going on around here? And I don't think he's coming back. Coming back. I did too. Oh, it's not that part yet. I was on the, I did too much crying. Wasted too much time. Now I'm hearing lying. Oh, that's what she be saying. Wasted too much time. Now I'm hearing crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to be talking to y'all, ain't I? Let me see. What happened? Hold on. Okay, let's see what we got. 
You should have invited all of us on the fish fry. Girl, no. Hope you will go live during the cooking process tomorrow. I might. I got to order a deep fryer. Hold on, I build this up too much. Hold on, y'all. Okay. I'm going through your comments. Love hearing you play. What's up, Carol Hammett? Hey, sis. Love you. You are amazing. So are you, Nettie Davis. You should have invited all of us to the fish fry. I know I should have. Next time, sis. When you invite me to yours, <laughs> I'm going to invite you to mine. <laughs> I invite you to mine. Once you invite me to yours, okay? All right, let's see them. They are truly sad. Any kind of fish on sale. Hello. You already know Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. The group said you dogged, you dogged Jeremy. I dogged Jeremy? What I do? They don't like your reviews. <laughs> if they bad, the restaurant don't like them either. Do you order edibles online? I don't know what you're talking about. Do I say edibles? It's, this is Texas. Marijuana is illegal in the state. I don't know what you're talking about. They're saying you dog Jeremy and you were never his friend because you are fake. Oh, okay. Uh, tilapia fish, catfish, spots, croaker. We ain't no tilapia, girl. We ain't that. No swy? Why are they still even discussing Jeremy? That's an old topic. I don't know. You have a lien on that house. You owe the IRS. He brought up Jeremy. He's the one over here, over there talking about Jeremy. <laughs> now, it's, why are they even talking about Jeremy? It's an old topic. Theirs is ridiculous. You lied about the amount you're spending in Indonesia. You don't refund people that cancel and die. I have a lien on my house? Okay. I owe the IRS. Oh, that's cute. I lied about the amount I'm spending in Indonesia. I did. You don't refund people for that. You don't refund for people that cancel 2023 that you cancel. I don't stick with the piano lesson, lead singing and all. I know. Round the world, looking for my baby. You whisper in their ear to go on your website, purchase several items, and then input the wrong shipping address, and then checked, then then check out without double checking. Right. That's what I did. Ain't that crazy how that happens? Hi, Darius. I'm a silent watcher. What's up, Lori? How are you doing? Stephanie, you're absolutely adorable to me too, Putin. Wish I could have been there. I will miss you. Stacy. I know. If you were here, you know you'd be right here with us. This is my jam too. Do Okay, this um, this part I'm gonna have to uh, mute. And we I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, and then we getting out of here. This is all because uh, he uh, it's so much. This this parasocial relationship because um he's gonna start playing the piano. Oh, let me get, this is something that was interesting to me. Hi, Darius. I'm a silent watcher. What's up, Lori? How are you doing? Stephanie, you're absolutely adorable to me too, Putin. Wish I could have been there. Now they're pudding. So this whole live over here on, on Facebook today was love bombing. All of it. You ain't heard him calling them stupid, no bees, no holes, no insults. It's pudding, sweetie. I will miss you. Stacy, I know. You people here, you know you'd be right here with us. So some of y'all who wonder why they still follow him, I don't understand that. It's like an abusive relationship. Think of people who've been in mentally or physical abusive relationships. Usually they're in them so long because the person doesn't always only give them negative and only the beatings and only the uh, mental abuse. They love bombing them as well. So they get little bits and pieces, little hits of endorphin of like, oh, they do like us. They do love me. He gives them that. That's what this session was. This my jam too. Do this my jam. Okay, let's see. You are incredibly talented. Love you. Love you too, Putin. Hey, always. I love your cabinet. Brand are they? My cabinets. I 
I don't have any upper cabinets on purpose. I have lowers, and they're all these are all custom. So they just they built them. This is no brand. Go. go. So that's uh, he's a saying ish when it comes to his kitchen. First, first of all, he like my cabinets. Like he ain't got no cabinets. Uh, you got lowers. <laughs> I think he was about to try to get smart and then realize, oh, I do have lower cabinets. I was trying to get get him in the shot, but anyway, with the with the cabinets, um, he's talking about uh, they're no brand because they are custom. They built them. Damn them, damn. Uh, some of y'all who homeowners and stuff, y'all know, Home Depot. Well, all the uh, big box stores. Home Depot Lowe's, they sell those unfinished raw cabinets, the ones that you got to paint yourself. His people, the guys he hired, bought those cheap ass cabinets. I used to be a contractor, y'all, so y'all know I know. And I got a rental property, so you know I know. They bought those cheap ass cabinets that were unfinished and they put trim on them. They built them up a little bit. That's it. But those, those cheap ass um, unfinished cabinets. That's what those are. Not custom built from scratch. Not at all. And then they painted them. Crazy how that happens. Right, uh, Clarissa, uh, off the shelf. So whereas he should have said, oh, they got them from Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards. He, uh, they, ain't, they ain't no brand. They, they custom. No, they a brand. Whatever brand them stores sell. Hi, Darius. I'm a silent watcher. What's up, Lori? How are you doing? Stephanie, you're absolutely adorable to me too, Quentin. Wish I could have been there. I will miss you. Stacy. I know. You'd be here. You know you'd be right here with us. This is my jam too. This is my jam. Okay, let's see. You are incredibly talented. Love you. Love you too, Quentin. Hey. Always, I love your cabinets. What brand are they? My cabinets. He was ready. He was ready to be like, I ain't got no cabinets. I don't have any upper cabinets on purpose. I have lowers, and they're all. These are all. But that wasn't the question. She didn't say, "Where did your upper cabinets come from?" That's not what the question said. Where did you get your cabinets from? But you see, ready, just ready to be sassy, but then realized he was the one that was wrong. Custom. So they just they built them. This is no brand. Go, go spoil wants you to get a complete blood panel and show the results. Tell um, Ghost Boy, I'll show my HIV results <laughs> when his record gets expunged. See, the difference between he and I is he has mug shots. I don't. He has convictions. I don't. He's been to jail and arrested. I haven't. <laughs> people need to get a life i agree right she's chosen yet <laughs> darius crook doesn't have that story yet they should he should because it's just that he ain't been caught that's the only, it ain't that he ain't committed crimes he's committed plenty tons of crimes he just ain't got caught well, you know i'm their life so that's fine somebody said you went to their home for a dinner party and left it a mess who said it and why they? And if I got it off Airbnb, why they didn't file a claim with Airbnb? I think I think they say that's called. Um... So again, he's also taking some of the factual things that we talked about. Y'all know we had the Verbo owner on here, who literally showed the receipts of uh, Crystal renting her space, and then Darius Crooks taking over, uh, and then them trashing it, and she having pictures of the damage that they did, et cetera, et cetera. Now, for one, he's calling the Airbnb, knowing that 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 story we were talking about was a verbal situation. But now acting as if it's just all made up and they buying it and they like, see, he always get a receipt. He ain't gave y'all that damn receipt. I literally interviewed the lady over here, showed receipts and he gets to just say, if it's true, why they didn't go through uh, Airbnb? What? Yeah, he watched. Oh, yeah, he watches the videos and tells on himself all the time. Absolutely. I think that's called being a Monday morning quarterback. Ain't that what it's called? Cause how you gonna get upset with me 
about trashing your house, when I'll dig a dick. She had the dates. She had the receipts. She had the message exchanges. She had proof that you uh, charged back your credit card. Who is the somebody? See, you don't give me no somebody. Tell me who it was. So because the flying monkey who's asking a question doesn't know the person's name, even if they knew it, you know, he's he's gaslighting. See, when I give you the T, I give you a receipt. I give you a full receipt. Okay. Love for you. Can you have the clock behind me? No. I got it from um girl, probably home goods or somewhere. Somewhere, home goods, one of them places I'll be going. Yeah. Yeah, who you think paid for that? Thanks. So all in all, it's like 35. Is he? Wait, let's make sure my they try to uh they try to get my live gone. Okay, hold on. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Uh I ordered a knife in a skillet. I love that my shipments just got to me just fine. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. What's up, Lori? I love you too. Hi, Orinda. The edible child. The edible. So this is uh Anita Baker came on. So again, this is part of the love bombing as well. This is part of creating that uh parasocial relationship oh you're so talent you talented you can play the piano and then he's playing r&b music in the background people can relate to that uh it speaks to you know the solo people etc and then he gets to play the music love bombing the hell out of them and they don't even understand what's happening bring anything different do the exact same thing right because who i gotta be to get some reciprocity is gonna hit every single time and i guess that was just a reinforcement in my oh, i forgot about this oh jesus so much this my jam y'all is this my jam hold on this is my jam bro girl this is my jam His music is about as bad as his spoken word and <laughs> comedy. <laughs> ah! Ah! He just, that note is, he is not hitting that note. The edibles, child. And the, the edibles. Donna says the piano, the piano needs to be tuned. And the pacing is off, too. I'm like, I'm trying to listen. I'm like, it's so much going on that's not right. Edibles. Here we go. He know it ain't sounding right. Talking about some edible. There we go. Okay, I can't play all that because that uh they'll get me for copyright problems. Uh thank you so much, Sonya Charlie friend, for uh the super sticker. I appreciate you for your continued support. Oh, sorry, y'all. When that's come on, you know it hit me real fast. I had to I had to go get that out. You know, when the, the song be like, hold on, that's my part. Um, okay. Let me keep going through these so I can um, let y'all go in a little bit. Um, hey, Darius, they resending my cookbook. They said it came back. Okay, beautiful. They, they resending it. Thanks for my video, Tasha from St. Louis. What up, Tasha from St. Louis? You're welcome. What video? Right. I love your comment. It was a crazy fur babies lady. Uh, he is really into himself. This is fascinating to watch. That's how th th I literally study this in that way. Because it's, it's also crazy because when I knew him, he wasn't this version. But there were little pieces that are still here that I'm like, wow, I didn't know that was turning into this or that was this or that need he has for attention. Like I've told y'all before. When I when I knew him before he was an influencer, what no such thing, you know, Darius Crooks or uh, Cooks or Crooks or anything else. He used to hold me hostage on the phone every single night. He had to talk to me before he went to bed. And before I knew any better, I thought that was because of us. But then I learned it was because of him.
and his need for attention. He ha- he needs so much attention that he has to have it until the moment he's ready to close his eyes. It's it's sad. It's sad. It's like an infant, like a baby. Like one of them, the the baby, the, the spoiled babies that you got to hold in your arm. And as soon as you're like, oh, they sleep, let me put them down. They like, ah, ah. And it's like, oh, shoot, <laughs> can't put you down. One of them babies, that they can only sleep when they're in your arm. Need that much attention. He wanted those. They say, oh, my God, when is that edible going to make him go to bed? Geez. Yeah, and this was in the middle of the day. This was this. He's back live right now as I'm speaking. He is back live. He's gone live twice, if I'm not mistaken. But it, he went live. This was like around, I don't know, two in the afternoon, I think. He's live again. And he was live this morning. I know. Slipped up and told it. I done told the world I'm HIV positive, child. I done told the world I'm HIV positive and, and ain't near about ain't near about HIV positive. Um, I love all my stuff. The skillet, chopping board. Thank you. The relaxation, they are beautiful. I got them right over there, matter of fact. Who was bullying him? He needs to get a backbone. I don't know. I also think that, like, if you're going to be on social media, because, you know, one of the things that he purports a lot of, this Jeremy we're talking about, is he always be talking about, he be saying stuff like, um, you know, I've been doing this for 16 years. You know, I've been on this for a long time. And part of me is like, if you've been doing this for a long time, like you say you have, and like, if you've really been on the battlefield for the Lord, as long as you say you've been on the battlefield for the Lord, why, how are you letting this stuff bother you? Like, I don't, for the, I can't understand that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. The hypocrisy of it all. He literally has this live title. What are my haters saying? What are the hate groups saying? Y'all let me know. And he spent this entire live fielding questions and, and information from his flying monkey D hags of what the alleged hate groups are saying about him. But then Jeremy can't handle it. Huh? Look like you can't either. Your way of handling it is different, but you can't either. I don't know. And also, I can't cut somebody and tell them how to bleed at the same time. So part of me allows a little bit of grace for him to process that. But, you know, girl, it is going to be what it's going to be. He was in competition with me. I don't compete. What's up, Crystal Addison? And that's again the the D Hag, um, their way of rewriting the narrative. Now Jeremy was jealous of an in competition with Darius Crooks. Why? And where did you get that from? There's nothing he said or done that makes it appear like he's in competition with Darius Crooks. Like nothing. They just make it up as they go. Whatever they gotta make up to help him create his narrative. So that he because they do the same thing where they have learned that they have to make the other person the the villain. He has to be the victim. So they'll adapt to whatever narrative they need to adapt to so that Darius Crooks is the victim in the situation. And whoever whoever the other parties are, are the villains. Whether it makes sense or not, and they ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time don't make sense, but it don't stop them. He said he's scared of people now and won't go to public events because everything that has happened. He's from St. Louis, child. Got to be. Blame everything on somebody else. Now, that was a read, just in case, for those of you who don't know. He's not from St. Louis. He's from Mississippi, but he's Darius Crooks is once again uh, sliding St. Louis. And now he's giving St. Louis the title of they don't know how to accept accountability and want to blame everybody else. The entire city of St. Louis. So now this applies to Jeremy because he's also a person who doesn't want to take accountability and points at other uh, people. See how they just they just make it up as they go. People who judge judge themselves. Thanks, Darius Cooks. All people are human. Absolutely. What up, Walk Mo? Glad you're enjoying all the products. I 
I'm definitely a Capricorn. Jeremy said he wouldn't be friends with anyone that was friends with somebody he fell out with. It's immature. We love a one in my head because you sure can come over here in the fridge. Aw, oh, thank you. I surely couldn't understand how he was supposed to be so sensitive the way he gets smart with people. I didn't think that y'all would be that y'all were gonna be a good fit. I guess. I told you his live really bothered me. It was about friendship. Friends don't do that. I agree. I agree. What up, Sacramento? But friends do what Darius Crooks has been doing since day one. Darius Crooks got on the live and started asking them why they weren't buying the tickets when his friend Jeremy quotes friend Jeremy was saying and Corey don't, we don't need to do that thank you um Mc, McClendon D I think my eyes are struggling with I don't know I think it's the pink throwing my eyes off or something but um saying I watch your videos more than I watch shows on my expensive uh uh, satellite TV service. Uh, appreciate your diligence on this topic. Can't uh, I can't look away from Darius train wreck. Thank you so much. I appreciate your. Uh, oh wow! And <laughs> you see, my eyes are really playing tricks on me. I thought I was looking at five dollars, fifty dollars. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you for that. Um, McClinda, McClendonna, McClinda, McClendonna D. I think. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Who pulled it? Probably you, child. Hey, Angela from Connecticut. What's up? It's like he's having a meltdown. He's not built for this. So is he still online? Is he like, I thought he was going through. I don't know. I don't, again, I don't follow him. So I thought he said he was done for a while and he was making change. Uh, listen, let me just tell you what I, what I know. I ain't going to give out my sources, but I got a couple of inbox messages from y'all. Because y'all reached out to him in concern and the general consensus on the theme of the responses was, I'm finna get off social media. This ain't good for me. So you mean tell me he's still on social media? What up, Latoya? I know. I want to do Donna with Darius Cooks in Cancun, Cancun so we're going to plan it. I promise. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do something. I promise. Three days of food. I promise. Has Corby offered to reimburse me? I mean, he hasn't offered. But in one of our recent conversations, it was like he left the door open for some reimbursement if I asked him. He he never offered. He did not offer. But he kind of like left the door open a little bit to make me go, oh, okay. You know, at least, you know, if I really wanted or something, he might have he did something to, I don't know, just being nice, I guess. Will your restaurant be open in Bali by September 2025? I have no idea. I have no idea. Anybody notice? Ate, ate those, uh, what was those, olives or something he was eating? Wasn't he putting his hand in there? And I ain't seen not. Nan drop of water touched them old nasty hands. He didn't clean the toilet. He went from cleaning the toilet, touching his face and stuff, snorting as usual, then eating olives with his bare hands, the toilet hands. Now he didn't sit down on his sofa, still ain't washed his hands. Got toilet juice all on in his toilet mouth. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Love my tangerine casserole dish. Thank you, Cornelia. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I love the way you, I love, I just love the way you make me laugh. I am for it all. Thank you, Mona. What up, Mona? Platanos maduros y arroz y habichuela. Claro que si, me gustan. I see why you work by yourself. Don't have to worry about other people's issues. And don't. So St. Louis food better than Charlotte. Olive and oak and blood and all right, that's enough. Y'all know how it gets. It just it hits me. The mood hits me. I'm like, I'm done. I'm I'm way out. <laughs> Can't take no more. I'm over it. Uh, I'm gonna read your co comments. Uh, start a few of them, and uh, then we're gonna head on out of here. Um, I am. My eyes are struggling. I think it's time. 
is it the glasses? Is it because I don't want to have them on my face? I don't know what's happening. Um, I recently got an uh, epiphany about him last time. I saw him on IG. He really has no friends and is alone. He talks on his live like his viewers are his friends. He really has no one but social media. Yeah. Yes, parts of what you're saying are true. Other parts are not true. So again, this is this is what the hags, the flying monkeys are, who are over here watching. They look at comments like this. They run and tell her, as in Darius Crooks, her, stuff like this, saying, they say you ain't got no friends, Arr, but we know about uh Now I can't even think of the names. Uh, he got friends. <laughs> he does that. And Lunch Lady Eric, Arr, and um, Dr. Bobby, Arr. he does have friends. It's, that's not true that he doesn't have friends. However, it is true that uh, he's only loyal to himself for real, for real. And those friends that he does have, and he has had some of those friends for 20 years or whatever, he keeps them in a certain box and they and he needs them for whatever he's getting from them. And that's and they've they've provided that need for have along. So he does have real life people who are in his life who ignore all of this. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't, that part I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. But um, but it is also true that he his real priority is the online viewers and he treats. I know he's going to even say he treats them like his friends as much as they feed his need for attention. And and in their eyes, he is a deity. He is a king. He is a god. And they treat him as such. And that feeds his narcissism and sociopathic needs. And so he's drawn to that. Plus, he makes money from it. On top of that, don't forget that part. He get and they and they everything he do is okay. And if it ain't, he can block them. They laughing. If he blocking people, if he um, scamming people, and people are saying it in front of them that he's scamming them, they jump on his side. And whatever he do is good. There is gold. You see, he can eat, slide. He can dig in a toilet, uh, uh, and then sit there and eat with his bare hands, and they don't say nothing. They still, we love you. You oh, you so special to me. Y'all saw those comments. So yes, partially yes. Your comment is true about the uh, obsession with social media and uh, the toxic, unhealthy relationship that the parasocial relationship he has with the followers and they have with him. However, in li in life, he does have real friends uh, around. Uh, case manager says, Vail, at what point did he work earning a six figure income with Crush uh, and Wakefield or was that also a lie? We ain't never seen that amount of money. Uh, the, like, y'all see the kind of person that Darius Crooks is, where he posts how much money he makes every, you know, every time you turn around and, and bragging about it, etc. He ain't posted this six-figure uh, income. He just bragged about having it. Also, it was in New York, so that ain't also that far fetched, and that it, it ain't gonna necessarily go that far in New York. Um. The only thing he ever posted off the top of my head, and I think I'm remembering correctly, but the only thing I've seen posted that proved that he, well, I don't know if it proves it, but the only thing that he posted that is a technically kind of receipt almost is his um, letter of resignation when he was quitting that to become a full-time influencer. But he claimed he was a VP uh, of HR with a corner office and where he takes the picture and what and um, there was a picture of his his desk. He was at a cubicle there. So take that with a grain of salt. I got some like uh, over time. I'll get back to those receipts. I'll be able to put some of the pieces together again. It's been so long. Some of the stuff I haven't looked at in like two years. Uh, Vail, where did you meet this clown? Sugar Sharon. Now, I know, friend, you've been around a long time. You know, that's in my first videos. And I've talked about it multiple times. And I talked about it during the lunch machine um, video. So for any of you who have that question, 
Because uh, y'all watch it. I've already repeated that. I, in every live, I'm not going to be repeating the same stories. But um, I told it even more recently in the lunch machine story. So if you go to the lunch machine videos, which were only, what, two weeks ago or whatever, it's in that. Uh, and then if you want to go even further, where I go really in detail, you can go to my first couple Surviving Darius Crooks videos from two years ago. Um. I wonder if he scammed his family. You know, Nurse Lady Vogs, I'm still, I don't have any proof of that, but I have wondered about that myself. That it's something more to this story of why he isn't, uh, why he, how he, why he got kicked out, et cetera. I got to find that. I do have the, the blog where he tells the, or writes the story at that time. And maybe it's going to be more accurate because uh when he had a blog he was like doing like a uh a journal and it was on the on the internet and he when he was living out on the street or whatever he he had some entries about it so we'll and back then because he was i don't know though see i think he always was in victim mode and never able to take accountability i believe that that is the case um so there's a chance that the version of the story is still skewed yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. I don't have any proof about him scamming his family, though. I haven't heard anything, but I just suspect that there's, we only hear in Darius Crook's side of the story, and he's always the victim. So there's that. Corey, Corey's next watch. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a while, though, because Corey's, you know, too busy capping for Darius Crooks. I can see Corey even giving Darius Crooks a lot of grace with this whole, drink book uh cookbook thing a recipe book that he's supposed to be helping him with that he'll probably never help him with uh or if he helps him at all it's he definitely ain't gonna put no real effort into it thank you jane though that's perfect perfect way to put it Corey is a footstool so it'll be a while it'll be a while Corey will probably only move on when he has someone else to clout chase after like um who y'all tell me y'all i saw it in the replay i didn't notice it during the actual live stream Y'all said who it was that uh, Corey uh, had posted that he um, had had a dream about that they ha had become friends or something. Uh, it, it was the comedian, the influencer comedian guy. Oh, my God. I can't think of his name. Desi Banks. Thank you, Jay, uh, Jane, though. Um, Desi Banks. So I ain't saying he's going to connect with Desi Banks, but somebody, whoever his next person he want to clout chase and latch himself on to to hopefully take himself to the next level that'll be when Corey will like move on from Darius Crooks but yeah right now he's in Darius Crooks good, good graces because he's kissing his ass anybody who kisses Darius Crooks ass is is good in his book uh Clarissa is saying people sue other folks for lying so why hasn't he done the same I keep asking this same question because his excuse before that, uh, Carissa, rather, his um, excuse before was he could not sue us for defamation because of the fact that he was still making tons of money and we were only helping him grow. So and you got to be able to prove a financial loss, which is part of it. it's three, uh, three, uh, a three point criteria you have to reach uh, to prove defamation. One is it's got to be false. That's a number one. So he claimed, although we supposedly lying, all these, all of us, exposed groups and, and me over here and everything, we all lying, but he couldn't sue us because uh, he making money from it. Well, the way I look at it now, as we fast forward two years later, he's taking quite a hit. Can't get awards. Um, can't sell out uh, the, the two kings and a queen tour. Um I don't know if he can really blame us for the kitchen comeback. That was on him. <laughs> totally. Hell, the three queen, uh, uh, three queens tour was on him too. The uh, failure of that. But anyway, it's other stuff. It ain't coming to me right now. But all this other stuff that he's lost, it is clear that his brand is tanking. Oh, that, that foundation, it's got cracks in it. Oh, it's just cracking all around. And it's only a matter of time before it just comes crumbling down. So... I agree with you, but he's still using. Well, he last I heard when when they were asking him that question, but it's been a long time. Um, 
I feel like they stop asking that question now because they know it ain't true. <laughs> they like, no, nah, we know this stuff true, Master, but we're going to play along with you. <laughs> uh, Chocolate says he's always under the influence of something. Shaking my head. Yeah, he needs it to function at this point. And again, that's why I tell y'all, he is not the same person I knew. The Darius Crooks I knew, well, the Darius I knew, did not do drugs at all, hadn't tried drugs, drank sporadically, but like socially, occasionally. I, I, he had never been drunk or anything like that uh, back in the day. He was very clean cut, very church boy-ish, shelter church boy kind of. Except for he was doing a lot of scams on the side I ain't know nothing about. <laughs> So I was the one that was really sheltered, truth be told. I was the one. I was the one that was really sheltered because I didn't even know. Uh, I saw the menu planning live. It was garbage then and now. So Nick T is saying they were in it. They were one of the people watching it. And it was garbage then and now. But he wants to say, but y'all were saying it was perfect. Everybody was agreeing with everything. Then when I put it out, y'all say y'all hate it. So that's y'all fault. <laughs> uh, S. Marlena is saying um, the menu was a bottle of Hennessy <laughs> with food on the side. Yeah, basically, basically. And then Rebel is saying, and, and they talked over Corey the whole meeting. I think I may have that recorded or parts of it. Cause I feel like I, I caught wind of some of it. I feel like saw it or some like bits and. But again, I'll start recording and just walk away. So I may have it. Hopefully, I do. And then if I do, we'll watch it one day. Cause it feels like I did know that part, or maybe I saw clips. But I feel like I actually might have some of it. Why did Chantel's kitchen come back? Menu looks so much different than the tours. Uh, didn't Darius create both? See, she's chosen. He claims that he did create both. I don't really know the answer to that 100%. I do know that he claims that even with the um, the the uh, Three Kings tour, he sent that menu to another chef friend, and that guy had other recommendations. He said he thought they were garbage or whatever because it was coconut something or other. Um. It makes me say that I wonder if he got help with that kitchen comeback menu. And then when he was asked, why didn't he do the same stuff that was on the kitchen comeback menu? I can't remember. He used some some bogus excuse for why he didn't just use similar things to that. I think he was like, uh, uh, y'all don't want the same stuff or something crazy, even though he's been serving the same stuff on the Dining with Darius Crooks tour for years, literally the same menu. He's he's not that creative. He's not that creative. <laughs> like usually it's everybody's so creative. <laughs> he's not that creative. Literally, he's he's recycles the same stuff. He makes the same stuff over and over. Puts a little spin over here and there, steals a new recipe here, then puts it in the mix. But he's making the same stuff he's been making forever. He's skipping the country because he's being evicted. Jane Doe. See, this is what we're going to stop doing over here on the Veil B Reacts channel. We're not going to make, especially, well, they ain't going to go on the screen and I ain't going to read them. But that's how we do that because I can't, I can't control y'all grown. <laughs> can't control what y'all type it. But I want us to get better at not just saying stuff that we don't have actual receipts or proof of. Because what happens is what we just watched her do. You actually give her fuel to gaslight with. There are flying monkeys in here right now. D hags, flying monkeys, deplorables. Hey, y'all, they in here right now. And when people make comments like this, a blanket, he being evicted, who said he being evicted? Where he, what is he being evicted from? That's just not true. Unless you got some proof of something I, don't, I ain't heard about yet, which I doubt. <laughs> like, I doubt. He owns his house. He was behind in his taxes. Um, I heard some about a lien or something potentially out there, but I don't know that to be 100% true. And it could have been the tax lien thing that they were referring to. But that has now been cleared up. He paid it after people pointed it out. So for the flying monkeys, we showed that over here. We have receipts. But we can't make blanket statements like that, that he being evicted. That might be an assumption in your head. 
So you could say, well, I think uh, maybe he running because he's being evicted. But that's just not the case. It's just not. He's running <laughs> because of the fact that he knows that the house of cards is falling and he needs a plan again. This ain't the first time he's moved. Chicago, he started getting in trouble. What did he do? He moved to New York. New York started getting heavy on him from all those little penny scams he was doing. Moved to Atlanta. Atlanta restaurant stuff, the above 701 credit card scam. The state says you can't have another business license in here. Basically, the scam started coming down on him. Moves to Houston. Houston, this is now a national thing where his reputation is trash. He can't get Nan brand deal. Even when he sneaks like a thief in the night and gets somebody to potentially want to give him an award or potentially want to put him in a, a, a magazine article or this or that. And as soon as they get wind of who he is and what's happening around him, it's gone like a thief in the night. So he knows. And as much as he jokes about uh, if the, the FBI know where I'm at, blah, blah, blah. The truth is, he knows that the clock is ticking and that it ain't going to be lasting forever. So he's making a, his next game plan. He's gotten used to the grift. The grift is when I F up so much here, I got to move to move on to the next one. He's like, I got to have somewhere to go where I can't be extricated to pay for my because he ain't used to paying for his crimes go to bali but he also gets to do this under the the guise of because again the blind muggers the d haggers they it's so great that this black rich man going over to bali he say it's so peaceful it's so beautiful the weather's better they they don't have no crime all this stuff and yes some of that is true except for the no crime part that was him lying <laughs> Gaslighting and exaggerating like she normally do. But it doesn't sound foreign to say, I made enough money that I can buy a place somewhere nice, tropical, blah, 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 blah. But that ain't her only reason. Everything she does, a bit of the, a bit of the truth wrapped up in a big old lie. This is her exit strategy, y'all. Anytime you own a business, any of y'all who've been in business, entrepreneur, et cetera, et cetera, been in some business management classes, Y'all know you got to have a SWOT analysis and you got to have your exit strategy when you do your business plan. This is her doing her, biz, her business plan for her scam pyre. Last step, her exit strategy is to move to Bali where it is tropical, beautiful, and cheap so she can make the money she scammed from y'all. Stretch. Because she know the grift is going to be up at a certain point. That's what's happening. Now she being evicted. She still own that $200,000 house in Houston in that uh, horrible neighborhood with a, 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 a gate around the parking lot. <laughs> she said she owned that. She bought that with y'all money from the um, Carolina Pound Cake Company when she scammed y'all with that stuff. With the molded dry cakes and the, the, the last bulk of y'all didn't get nothing because she shut down the business. Well, I'm sorry. State of uh, Georgia shut down the, the health department, shut down the business because Palmer called on them because it had never been inspected. It was a trap bakery. But he had he had gained money from y'all. That money, Carolina Pound Cake uh, scam bought that Houston house. I literally have the text messages proving it. I got so much I ain't never showed y'all <laughs> so, so much. So, yeah, let's let's I just want us to. Just state facts. It's so it's so much to talk about that's factual and still juicy and still all of it that we ain't got to just throw stuff out there. And if you're still learning, you're still learning so you don't really know, you want to feel like you want to add something to it. Wait. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Just wait. Don't just be saying stuff because they run and then they... And this helps him with his narrative that we are making up-ish because they're going to run. With that comment and say, Nasa, they said you got evicted. You getting evicted. And he like, how the hell I'm getting evicted? I own this house. <laughs> Taxes paid. How they evict me? What I'm evicted from? I only have this house and it's paid for in full. That would be true. Now that makes us look crazy. Make it, make it look like we're just making up shit over here. And we're not. Well, I ain't. <laughs> I ain't. 
No need. It's so much. <laughs> Thank you, Pressure G. Um, what? Oh, I'll read this one there. Uh, so with all the redundancy of comments every night, it's getting old. So the FBI comments and the other comments need to stop. <sighs> Yeah, again, I, I'm giving grace for some of y'all know stuff that I don't. It's rare. <laughs> I got to keep it real. It's rare that somebody giving me something I don't fit, like some piece of the story that I don't know. Y'all be knowing the day to day stuff that I might not know. And I always ask if I don't know. But it's rare that I'm getting like the, the meat and potato stuff that I don't know. But if you know something and you know it to be factual, I don't have a problem with you sharing that in the chat. But the pie in the sky or you, your assumption that you state as facts. Let's back off from that because some people don't know and they'll even take your comment and say, and I'm not picking on because I see this a lot. So I'm not picking on um, Jane Doe specifically. I'm just saying in general. So this is a general statement. It's just this reminded me to have this conversation with, with my people. But somebody else who's newer to all of this may take that comment that was stated as an opinion as fact. And now they get to spreading it. And then he again is. See, they over there lying. I ain't never got the See, on Vail B channel. Oh, sorry. He's going to call me LaVille. On Vail's channel, they over there. Uh, he's talking about something I got evicted. And Vail ain't never said it, but it's on his channel. So you, just be careful with that. That's all. That's all. Just be careful. Why is no one noticing uh, that he can't keep any friends? Again, that's not really true. That's not a true, a fully true statement. His short-term friends, and I told y'all this before. He, he ends friendships with people he's in business with. That's how his friendships end. But he does have long-term friends. And the long-term friends, I mean, he got friends that he's had. Lunch Lady Eric, he's been friends with for 30 years. Yes, Darius was like 16 or 17 when they met. Or well, almost 30 years. 20-some-odd years, they've been friends. And, and that, that friend group, all those people. So he got friends that he's been friends with for 20 something years. Then he got some that's even less and he got the ones that he travels with and all of that. The difference though, that makes this statement true is people he gets in business with. The, the people who go from being just friends to business partner friends, a Jeremy. Corey was never a friend. That's the difference between Corey's too, Corey too. Jeremy and Darius had at least some semblance, <laughs> Darius's word, semblance of a friendship prior to the business situation. So when that went awry, that got affected. Same with me and other people. It's, I'm not the only case. I can literally go down a list of people who were friends with Darius Crooks for a year, like dec a decade or more or whatever, who all of a sudden when they got in business with him, he did them dirty and they're no longer friends. So that's the that's the difference when you get into that business arena with him. And he says he doesn't play fairly. He doesn't play well with others. He said it himself as it pertains to business. And it's true. It's literally like you don't realize when you get when you go into business with Darius Crooks as partners. I ain't talking about as adversaries or competitors in two separate businesses. You go in business with him as a business partner and he treats it like a gladiator fight. He is out to kill you and destroy you and have it where at the end there is only one victor and he has to be it. And he'll do it by any means necessary. Destroying your reputation, destroying you, uh, causing you harm, mental harm. You, just look at what he's doing with Jeremy. It's not good enough that, OK, now that's not going to work out. Jeremy ain't going to get no money from um, this three king stuff. Now he must destroy Jeremy's reputation. And taught him. Same with Chef Carmen, another one. But they didn't get in business together, to my knowledge. I don't know. I think they might have been talking about something behind the scenes, but I'm not sure if I got that correctly. Again, see, you see how I did it? I wasn't sure. So I didn't say, yeah, and they was about to get in business together. I know. I'm sure they was. See, y'all see how that? I said, I'm not sure. But with Chef Carmen, they were cool. They were friends. Whatever went down. He now is trying to destroy her. He mentions her name almost every single effing day and taunts her, harasses her, disparages her. And that was his friend. She's the one who was holding him down while I was over here doing the starting the uh, Surviving Darius Crooks series. 
and I'm putting my stuff together. You got Carmen. I don't know why nobody be messing with you, Darius. Dare you a good man. You a good man, Darius. She doing all that. Drunk on the uh, cooking live with him. We, we watched that footage a long time ago. She doing all that, holding him down. Her time comes, she has some scandal. Tossed her to the side. He gossiping about her on his live. He, um, uh, She was in a lawsuit with her uh, business partner. He links up with the business partner. Then that business partner looked like she was like a Chantel thing, like she trying to a scammer versus scammer. <laughs> and then he he threw her to the side. Then he dragging her too. Then he talking about them like they're a soap opera. What he claims that we're doing over here, although we're doing it for the betterment of people, we just keep it entertaining. Of course, you got to keep I can't sit here and lecture with no no porner like. And on this date, Darius Crooks, he filed this paperwork in the LLC and then he went on over to New York and then uh, he was uh, cyberbullying Miss Thomas here in this post dated April 13th of uh, 2029. Like, we can't do that. We don't do that. We're presenting that sort of information. But we got to do it in the entertaining way to keep the people interested. But what we ain't doing is just sitting over here being dramatical and creating shit. That ain't what we're doing. We're exposing the truths about who Darius Crooks really is in order to give a voice to the people who've been silenced, who've been harmed by him, the survivors, but also protect those who just didn't know. And they about to walk into the, the Satan's lair. <laughs> A lot of people like that. Yeah, y'all don't know how many messages I get. Oh, you saved me from blah blah blah. Da da da. I know what I'm doing over here, but we got to keep the facts. We got to keep it factual. I ain't gonna. Uh, do... Okay, this was fine. I don't want Jane Doe to think I'm picking on. You. I'm not picking on you, Jane Doe. I'm not picking on you. But I, I just want this out here, so I'm glad. I'm glad it's coming up, really. It's been on my heart. It's been on my heart. It's been on my heart. Like, I got to talk to the people. Like, I'm seeing too much of that. Like, it's, it's, y'all just got stuff taking, taking flight that ain't true. Uh, Jane Doe is saying, why has he never dated uh, a white man then? I'm, I'm, I get how you're questioning it because you're making an assumption that he never has. Mm. Mm -hmm. See? He actually... Has not dated, <laughs> but he's been with white people. He's been with white men before. That I do know. I don't know what we call dating, though. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, in my opinion, the way I define dating is meaning you go somewhere, there's an activity involved, recreational or food or something like that. But if it ain't involved, then <laughs> it's not dating. It's hooking up. So... Um, but he is open to all, all races and stuff. That I do know. Uh, Precious is reminding uh, you all want Vil to come on almost every night with this information. At least like the live. It's free to like the video. Thank you for that reminder, Precious. We're looking here at uh, currently 343 viewers and 308 likes. Again, I understand we won't get 100% for various reasons, legitimate reasons. But if we can get an extra 20 likes, I would, I'll be, I'd be happy with that. So if you haven't hit that like as of yet, please do so. And we're about to get out of here because I, I was about to end at the two hour mark. Uh, got one more comment, then we go. <laughs> right, <laughs> case management said uh, we know for a fact that he hooked up with a Hispanic man. He pays them. Yes, we do know that. I mean, the the Patreon people, I had ooh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a still read that. I had created a thumbnail and everything, y'all. Oh, I was about to come in over here and go in, and I pulled the the Patreon executive people. For those y'all who not on Patreon, we do have the Patreon. It's five dollars a month. Uh, it's where I get very you know more transparent, open. It's personal. We. We're actually having game night this week. I think we have it tomorrow. We're having game night tomorrow evening. It is only for the paid members of our Patreon. Uh, we have game night and there's, uh, you know, monetary prizes, et cetera. Uh, so if you're interested, join the Patreon. I know somebody else say, where's the Patreon information? I don't know. <laughs> it's at the top. It's pinned to the top of the uh, chat right now. Let me pull it up real quick. 
But anyway, I had posted over there on the Patreon uh, asking, because I'll ask them, you know, they're they're my consultants, my board of directors. So I was asking if I should, uh, <laughs> I was about to go in on that, that of him, Darius Crooks, uh, taking the picture of the male escort in his bed when he was in Mexico the last time. And they were saying I shouldn't do it. So I'm still going to do it. <laughs> I was just not going to make a whole, at first I was going to make a whole show about it. Then they started making me think about it. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm still going to mention it because it's worth mentioning. But then, um, yeah, we, we pushed it to the side. But, um, but yes, anyway, consider joining Patreon. Thank you, uh, Precious Goddess, scrolling across the bottom of the screen, as well as uh, it's uh, patreon.com backslash I am Vil B. Uh, and uh, it's also in the chat as well. Um, Tonya C is going to be our last comment for this evening. It says, didn't he have a falling out with his cousin or something Thanksgiving gathering uh, he was supposed to host at our house? I think the cousin was one of the few members he used to stay in contact with and there's some uh there's truth to that entire story tanya c uh i'm not sure how new you are over here but i literally told that story this week was that this week y'all let me know in the chat did i told that story this week or last week but i literally just covered that story i haven't gone in depth with like uh deep dive style but i gave an overview of that story actually multiple times but recently it was just a couple days ago um but yes, that was his his cousin that he was very close to. I know I knew her as well through him, of course, but I knew her as well. They were very close um, taking Sears uh, photos together. He claims that she uh, he noticed over time. <laughs> Again, he got to be the victim every time, every time. Thank you, Precious. Precious says I covered that story earlier this week. So check out uh, the uh, previous video, Tanya, and I and I talk a little bit more about that. But he's always got to be the victim. In short, he said that he noticed over time in recent years that she he was noticing she was jealous of him. So he he ended up cutting her. Uh, he claims he cut her off. Uh, he has blocked her from his life. So that's his version of the story. Again, she's always the victim as in she she as in he as in Darius Crooks. Um, but with that, I thank you all for a uh, great evening again. Uh, this was not as short of a live as I had expected, but that's because we were doing a reaction video piece. But we will be back on next week, probably Monday. I like to take Mondays off. I don't know what it is about Monday. I don't really like working on Monday. I work, but I don't like coming live on Mondays for some reason. But either Monday, but Tuesday for sure. Uh, but make sure you're subscribed to our VIP text community because that's where I always send out the notifications to keep you abreast of uh, when I'm planning to go live. Also, don't forget that if you are not or if you are a part of our Patreon community, we will be doing game night tomorrow evening. I think I'm going to just do the 7, 7 o'clock, seven, probably 7 o'clock, 7.15, but I'll be putting that information out on Patreon. So feel free to join uh, at the $5 tier. It allows you to participate in that. And it's a good old time. We do other stuff too. I mean, it's, it's a ball over there. It's a ball. So um, with that, until next time, until I upload the next video, uh, make sure. Oh, and thank you, Precious G, for handling the moderation in the background and Alice and uh, Don and everybody else on the front end. I'm sorry, y'all, um, who uh, was helping with the moderation. I greatly appreciate you. Uh, all right, y'all. I will talk to y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>